house. It's a freaking mansion, dude. You guys living well. And, um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, and so, yeah, I ended up playing for KP in that tournament and Brian O'Halloran was there. Uh, Kevin Smith was there. And off the top of my head, I can't f- remember the name of the guy that plays Silent Bob. Uh, I mean, plays Jay. Jay Jason? Muse. Jay yes. Muse. Yeah, yeah, he was there. And uh, it, yeah, it was, dude, it was legit. And I was at the final table, made it down to the final four with, uh, with Brian O'Halloran, who ended up winning. That's pretty awesome. Do you know who else was left in the final four? Uh, no, I think it was just friends. Okay. All right. the, the only two people of note that were in the final four were me and Brian O'Halloran. So <laughs> where was the game? It was, it, was it at the comic book store? No, it was at, it was at the guy's house in Red Oh, Bay. damn. And KP was there with you or he was just like. Yeah, KP was there hanging out, smoking some uh, cigars and enjoying the company of friends. What, what time did the, uh, did the game wind up finishing? All right. It was supposed to start at seven. It didn't start to like nine. Because Ke- we were waiting for Kevin Smith. Oh, you got to wait for the big boss, man, I guess. Oh, dude, it was, it was, uh, it, I didn't know he was going to be, I mean, I kind of, Kevin, uh, KP kind of told me he was going to be there, but then like once it got late, I was like, oh, he's not coming. And, uh, but they ended up, him and Jay walked in together and I didn't, pl- I didn't get a chance to play with them. They were at a different table because there was four tables of nine, I want to say. Damn. So, yeah. So That's I got down. Tournament. And you made yeah. top four. That's yeah, fucking made, awesome. Made top four. A couple shady calls went against me. Little technicalities that I don't agree with, but fucking cheaters. Probably because I was on the losing end. That's it. But no, it was it was a tremendous night, man. How dare they? Shame on them. Cheating. But I, listen, I won. I won my money back. That's all I care about. And an extra fifty for uh, because. They played a lot of side games where like everyone drew a suit. And if you had the same suit as the person that won, you got 50 bucks. So I had a diamond. Brian O'Halloran had a diamond. So Brian O'Halloran won. I get 50 bucks. Oh, so you had a hell of a night and you still walked away with extra money in your pocket. That ain't a bad deal. Actually, yeah, but we left before I got it. So I have to I have to figure out how to get that. <sighs> Damn. I told you, I, I gave KP my PayPal. I was gonna so say, imagine you get a Venmo from like, wall. imagine you get a Venmo like direct from Kevin Smith. That'd be hilarious. No, Kevin Smith wasn't running it. They got people, dude. It was a it was a first class event. They had like servers. They had every. It was, it was like living like a celebrity life. It was crazy. A lot of people from the shared universe. Uh, Fucking awesome. So uh, like, Big Kahuna was there, yeah, and yeah. and like Ming Chen and all those guys. Uh, no, Ming, Ming Chen's co-host on Comic Book Man was there, and his name escapes me too. Which Mike Zapsick. Yeah, Mike. He was there. Yeah. How about any of the Impractical Jokers? Like, was Brian Quinn there? Was uh, no. really was Walt Flanagan there? Brian Johnson? I don't know. Tony. These sons of bitches. Stop asking me questions, and the answers are not going to be good. Well, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Um, uh, yeah, because they just they just finished uh, filming Clerks Three. They wrapped on that. Uh, this coming week, they reopen movies in Red Bank. So I'm going to be heading to that on Saturday. And unfortunately, KP, who's recording his comedy album at... Yeah, it's, at Smog Castle. Yes. And I'm going to be there with the kid and the wife, dude. There's no way I'm going to be able to go see that show. Come on. Come on. I can't Stay imagine... Stay with me, kid. There. Fucking KP telling dick and fart jokes. Come on, dude. I'll get a hotel. Send the send the wife and kids back with the car. Where you and me will bunk up. We'll have some yeah. twisted teas, and we'll be good to go. I feel terrible about it too. I'm look. I'm buying the first copy of the album, and I want it autographed for sure. But I don't. I'm just not going to be able to make it to the theater. And I, I'm dying to find out what the theater looks like too. It's so cool that he. For those of you who know the Kevin Smith movies, he purchased uh, RS what used to be RST Video next door to the Quick Stop, and he turned it into. Uh, I guess the new Smod Castle because they used to have an old Smod Castle out in California. So uh, another excuse for Kevin Smith to stay local to the area, which you know, fine by me. Kevin Smith, good people. Yeah, I, I totally like uh, did like a, a Marky thing, and like I know he's a Devils fan. I purposely wore a Devil shirt. Oh, you <laughs> fucking dork! <laughs> no, no. But, a, but here's the thing, though, I'm a legit diehard Devils fan. So oh, it he is sense. too. But he it makes sense too. so that I would have no. No, of course. So, but I strategically planned it, so I'm such a loser. 
Well, you're a loser in more ways than one, Kev, because we'll get, we'll get into that shortly into this episode. Oh, yeah, about that. <laughs> Look, you had a valid excuse, but we'll put that for after the intro. Folks, you are listening to episode 549, Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. We have, I don't know, MetLife Wrestling from New Japan? How is that even a thing? Two nights of that. Mm. We had, of course, AEW's All Out, where CM Punk returned to the ring for the first time after a seven-year hiatus. Bro, we got tons of fucking news and notes. We got tons of debuts in AEW. We got so much to talk about. And it's all coming up next, right here, in the two-man production of the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. The following is a presentation of the Shining Wizards Network, broadcasting live on RantiumRadio.com and available on all podcast platforms and at ShiningWizards.com. Follow us on social media at Wizards Podcast. Check out our merchandise at merch.shiningwizards.com. Do your Amazon shopping at amazon.shiningwizards.com and become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash wizards podcast. As always, we thank you for your continued support. And now, enjoy the show. Hey, this is Chris Jericho, and you're listening to Shining Wizards Podcast, and this is the best day of my life. What's up? Fuckers! Oh shit, Scott, you motherfucker! He looks like he's shedding, Vince! No! Fuck no! Rolling in my two-man army! Ladies and gentlemen, you are joining us live for another exciting episode of the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast, the two-man army version. Tony and Kevin, of course, bringing you all the great stuff live on the rant, rantmradio.com, live on the Facebook, facebook.com slash Wizards Podcast, in podcast form, wherever you download your favorite podcast, because we are all over the place. And we're also back on Geek Life Radio. I kind of forget to mention that, but I'm not forgetting it tonight. Tuesday night, six o'clock, we're the Shining Wizards, where it's wrestling talk. And talk about that good old son of a wrestling. Now, I know I already announced who we are as part of the two-man army, but I'm going to give Kevin a chance to say his name proper. Tony! K-J-G. I know we had a little bit of cha- uh, chatting and whatnot about the, uh, the uh, shared universe uh, poker game, but Kev... How are you tonight? Oh, dude, I'm coming. I'm, I'm tired, but I'm, I'm coming off one of the probably top five best weekends of my life. So I was so tired that like I couldn't even like, like I didn't watch. I, I fell asleep before AEW even started last night and just like was like, oh, I can't watch this. I woke up at like one o'clock and watched it. But <laughs> but uh, but no, dude, it, I'm incredible, man. Had a great night at Russell Pro on Friday. Uh, got uh, had an incredible night there. Then Saturday night, uh, playing poker with the cast of Clerks. It, like, doesn't get much better than that. Finishing in the final four, baby. The final four. Living that and, fucking gangster lifestyle. I love it. I love oh, it. It's incredible. I put the both late nights. The Russell Pro show ended late. The uh, the tournament. I didn't get home till four o'clock in the morning. Oof. Yeah. That's a long night. It's a very long night. And then last night I was just like in and out, like napping up, sleeping. And then just, I was like, all right, we're gonna, I'm going to go to Matt's. I planned it out, set the Uber. And I was like, dude, I just can't do it. It's like a half hour. I just can't do it. Like fell asleep, woke up, had a couple of beers. Then, uh, and, then, and then watched the, uh, then watched the show. Cause I was off today. So I had to, I had to salvage it. I had to salvage the three day weekend. No, of course. And, and uh, I'm sure unless you've been living under a rock, this was a, uh, not so great week for a lot of folks up here on the uh, Northeast. I know, man, you got it. You got it a little worse than I did though, but look, we're alive. We're here. We're doing a show for you guys on Monday night. So there's that. But uh, I was showing Kevin before we started tonight. Studio A is in a little bit of a shambles right now, but 
look, I went into, I went into hurricane recovery mode. Like I did 10 years ago, which is funny because a lot of my Facebook posts from 10 years ago are pretty much talking about the same things that I'm dealing with today, pulling up carpets, wet vacuum water, steam cleaning, fans, heat, everything I can to kind of dry out of everything. But for the most part, it's going to be just like last time. Maybe the bookshelves didn't make it, but other than that, I managed to get everything out of the way and things should be back together shortly during the rest of the week. I feel like I'm a, I'm a hurricane mush. What do you mean? All right. So I go to Boston. Boston doesn't have a hurricane in 30 years. Yep. I was there for that hurricane 30 years ago. I, I come back to New Jersey the, like, within two weeks or three weeks, whatever it is, we get a storm that travels from the Gulf over the land to New <laughs> Jersey yep. just to see me. <laughs> you got to stay the fuck out of Boston, dude. I got to stay out of, I got to go away. I don't know where I got to go. I got to go somewhere. Holy like, shit. Like it traveled up the, through the Midwest through like the, the metropolitan, the, you know, the mid Atlantic and then decided, Hey, we're going to just flood New Jersey. And this is not something to laugh about because a lot of people had it a lot worse than we did. Oh, for sure. For More sure. people passed away from the storm in New Jersey than in Louisiana. It's, it devastated the entire state. It, is, it devastated New York. So first and foremost, bro, like condolences, to anyone listening to this, that my dad just told me that there's still somebody missing that's a student from Seton Hall University. Oh my goodness. So listen, we're not trying to make light of it. It's this was a bad, this was a bad deal. And it's only a it, it's it was only as bad because no one expected it to be what it was. Yeah. Dude, eight inches of rain in, in the on the mean streets of North Arlington. Eight inches. That's an insane amount of rain. Yeah. If we get two to three inches here, that's considered insane. This was just off the charts. It's it was crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And, and you consider yourself blessed. I consider myself blessed that we had a massive tree fall down in our backyard, crush my garage, crush my neighbor's garage, crush my, crush my other neighbor's garage. Um, but no one was hurt. The, my garage is going to fall down. And like, by the time this podcast is over, it's going to be, it's going to be on the ground and it's going to be done. And which is fine. It's just a garage. We don't have anything super important in there. Yeah, uh, but we just can't go in there to to assess anything because we're afraid that once we're in there, it's literally gonna fall on top of us. So yeah, thankfully it was just a garage though. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, one hundred percent, and we didn't really lose power until we actually lost power the next day, which was kind of weird. Yeah, but sometimes they shut it. They shut down a grid if they have to make a repair somewhere, you know. So I mean, That's true. The weird thing was like we wound up losing power like a night or two earlier because a transformer blew down the street, which had nothing to do with it, but there's just, you know, neither here nor there. Um, I do remember, I don't know if you'll remember this back in 99, we did have kind of the same situation where a hurricane actually hooked and actually came through like Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and came across. And the reason I remember that one was not so much like it was widespread flooding, like here, but it started flooding out important resources like like uh, one of the phone terminals when a lot of people still have cell phones wound up going down. It was in Rochelle Park, completely underwater. So it cut out everybody's phones. Now, I was living in Pennsylvania at the time, so I was trying to call people from home and I couldn't get anybody on the phone because all the phones were dead. So I figured, you know what, I wasn't going to go home this weekend, but I'll pack up the car, I'll hop in, I'll take a drive home. And of course, as I'm driving home. The alternator goes on the car uh -oh. and I'm halfway down 78. So thankfully I was able to call. And 78 is not a road you want to be. No, it sucked. Oh, I, I broke down one time moving out of Harrisburg, probably like six months after that, uh, with my father's van loaded with all my shit, with my cousin with me. We broke down on 78, called the tow truck. An hour later, I called the guy back. I go, are you coming? He goes, we drove by. We didn't see anything. I go, we're two fat fucks in a white van pulled over on the side of 78. How the fuck did you not see us? Sure enough, 10 minutes later, he came by and he saw us. Did you put the little dangly thing in your trunk of your car? Like the little... Yeah, we didn't have any show. Dude, we were the only assholes on the side of the road with a fucking couch in the back of the van. You know what I'm saying? I don't, how do you know if your car has one of those things? 
I don't, I don't know. Or do you have even... to buy it? See, it's weird. Like my wife's car doesn't even have a spare tire, but she's got like a tire <laughs> repair kit and it comes with like, the, it comes with those things, but those car, cars never came with that shit before. You know what I'm saying? I've never seen one in any car I've ever owned in my entire life. Those orange little like like flag football flags. Yeah, yeah, they 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 no like you know what I remember buying them like AutoZone. You could get like road flares, the flags, uh, the little help sign to put in your window, like all kinds of weird shit. Okay, so you have to go out of your way to assume that you're just gonna break down at some point. Yeah, so you gotta kind of <laughs> be prepared. You know, I had those flares for like twenty years. I I wound up throwing them out. I'm like, I don't even know if these damn things ever worked. Rick flares. Woo! Yeah, when you strike them, they woo. <laughs> they woo. <laughs> that dog's all they know. And then as they get older, they melt, like just like Ric Flair. <laughs> yes. That's right. As soon as it says woo, it melts. Rick F L A R E. That's right. <laughs> God, Ric Flair. Ugh. He was jacked back in the day, man. You remember, do you ever see those early pictures of Ric Flair where like no one even knew who he was? Oh, when he was all bloated and he was rambling Ricky Rhodes? Yeah. Huh. Dude, dude was a big boy. You know what? You know what it was too. Like uh, Dusty was his idol. Like he idolized Dusty. You know, it, like he, how is that possible? I feel like Flair is like twenty years older than Dusty. No, I don't. No, I think Dusty might have been. When did Dusty pass away? It's got to be over a decade. No, it's got to no. be. Wild. NXT was still kind of a thing. Yeah, you know, you might be right. Let me. Let me but me. NXT might be ten years old now too. Now that I think about it. Well, depending. Yeah, I mean, maybe the current incarnation of. Uh, all right, so Dusty was born in October of 1945. Flair's I mean, old. Uh, He's older than Flair then, I think. No, well, yeah, Dusty was born. Uh, Flair, sorry, shit. Flair was born February 25th, 1949. Oh, not so, by much. So maybe Flair got into the business just before Dusty did? Or Dusty, sorry, strike that, reverse it. Yeah, but you could still, like, like we saw this weekend, you could still be in the business at the same time as somebody and still idolize the hell out of them. Yeah, or maybe he saw Dusty up and coming and he realized that, you know, that's that Dusty was the reason he wanted to get into the business. Yeah. Completely so. possible. Kev, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Jay George, great friend of the show, will be joining us in the eight o'clock hour. Can't wait for that. He's talking about his cinematic masterpiece. Now, this is this is how you know Jay George is into something. Number one, he's promoting his own show. And number two. He changed his Twitter handle to J. George the movie, which I had no idea was even a thing. Is, is J. George approaching the record of most times on the show? Got to be close. I think I think we ran the numbers one time. It's it's like him and well, Louie are tops. Like yeah, him like and Louie got to be the top, right? And I think Dave LaGreca might be a close third. Oh, Dave LaGreca, yeah. We're not talking about the other guy. But uh, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be J. George. Like, yeah, J. George, uh, Dave, Louis, Dave, Dave. No, no, I don't think Louis, I don't think Louis is up there. All right. I'm going to have to pull this up. We're going to, we're going to have to do some. I don't think, I don't think Louis, like, as much as I love the guy, Maybe. I don't think he's, I don't think he's up there in terms of appearances. I ran the numbers during the ninth anniversary show, but fuck all. If I remember where those numbers I think are. it's, I mean, J. George has been on like seven times since then. So <laughs> I think it's J. George. I think it's. I have I have J. George listed as eight official appearances. What about uh, and the Greca is what? Wait, Louis, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Louis's been on seven times. All right, that makes sense. This will be J. George's ninth official appearance. Let me see. And, J. George, and you said that was from the ninth anniversary show. J. George hasn't been on since then. He has. No, no, he no, I'm saying the last time I ran numbers was ninth anniversary. The numbers I'm giving you now, I'm I'm just looking at the website. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Um, who are we looking for? LaGreca, L-A. Dave, one, two, three, four, five, six, also seven. So mm. Jay George could be the appearance leader. But no, but we also had him a bunch with the whole Thunder Rosa stuff since then. No, he that was an official appearance by him. He was on a full episode with us. But, but, but he's been on since that seven, since Live 9. David has been on promoting his thunder rosa issue like at least twice so dave might be up to nine no 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 i i keep good i keep good whatchamacallit numbers on the website i'm reading from the i'm reading from our official okay, website okay so he, he may not have been a guest but he was chimed in a hundred percent just like thunder rosa was right let me see let me two weeks i think it was like two weeks in a row to be honest with you let me see where's dave 
Yeah, the last episode I have, Dave, was it was 528 and 531. So those were like pretty much within a month of each other. And that was around the time he was putting well, yeah. up with Thunder Rosa. Okay, so that's so that's that's at seven. That yes. makes it seven. Yes. All right. All right. I thought it was more, but you're probably 100 percent right. I mean, I I do the best I can. Kevin Gill's up there with six appearances. It's been a while since we've had him on. Um, mm. I think that might be about it. Let me oh, see. Nobody's, oh, I wonder what he's on. What the Kevin Gill's up to nowadays? What does the Kevin Gill do? He's, he's doing out. commentary for Game Changer. Yeah, and Moxley wore that Game Changer hoodie out to the ring, which was pretty dope. Oh, Moxley's uh, Moxley's your new uh, Game Changer Wrestling World Champion after he defeated Kevin's favorite independent wrestler, Matt. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, what? Oh, you didn't know about this? I did not know about this. You didn't read the notes for the show? Shame on you. I've read the notes. I read the picks and I read the AEW stuff. I did not completely go all the way down the GCW rabbit hole. Let me see. It's... I read the WWE notes. I read the NXT notes. I read the Ring of Honor notes. I did not print the notes, but I do have here. Yeah. AEW's John Moxley is the new Game Changer Wrestling World Champion. At Art of the War Games on Saturday night, Moxley defeated Matt Cardona to win the GCW World Title. It was hyped going into the show that Cardona would be issuing an open challenge, which was uh, initially answered by Frank the Clown. But after hitting a belt shot, Cardona quickly defeated Frank the Clown to retain the title. G-Raver came out with a group of druids. Cardona took out a few of them. Then everyone left the ring until there was one druid remaining who hit the paradigm shift and revealed himself to be John Moxley. I didn't see any of this on any social media at all yeah oh yeah this was a big deal dude and then as a matter of fact after after moxley hit that one he hit a second one on a bunch of light tubes to win the title nick gage came out he said uh you know where to find me if you want that title shot so he's going to wind up defending the uh the title against nick gage october 9th in atlantic city in a death match so there you go so that's been announced but here's the thing so Matt Cardona created a spinner title for himself, which oh, is oh yeah he did the Universal GCW champion. Oh Universal, yeah, yeah. So now here's the thing: like, is Cardona like crazy enough to be like, well, I'm still the Universal champ, and that this becomes a thing? Tony, the answer to that is 100 yes. Oh, so you don't even know what what gear he came to the ring with, right? Uh, no, I saw it because he had he okay. already put it he already put it up for sale. All right, in the, in the major pod oh, group. Yeah. He put his boots up and the, what he, so he had, he had the crown on, right? Yes. He had the old macho King crown, the deathmatch King crown, but I didn't know that Moxley was the one that took it from him. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea this had happened either, but I saw, I saw the footage of it. So yeah. this must've been Saturday night then. Yep. Saturday uh, night. Like so he was yeah, playing yeah. the Pizzokers. Yeah. Cause I was, I was literally with Cardona on Friday night. He signed i uh, I've never asked for an autograph in like 10 years of, of, of uh, Russell Pro shows or PWS shows, unless it was for like the podcast or the Wall of Fame, but I had him sign uh, the Michael Kingston Headlock comic uh, fig story, uh, which is like the spin off of Toy Story. I had it signed by Brian. I needed it signed <laughs> by. I needed it. Si- I needed it signed by Matt, and now I need to get it signed by Mike. Um, so I just needed that done, and he was very cool about it. But oh my, I had no idea that he even lost the belt. Yeah, kind of weird though, considering he had just won the damn thing. But look, the people well, that like, like you him, said, now that he has it, now that he, now that he made his own belt, now this is going to be like a fun little. Listen, I know people shit on me because I mark out a lot, but there's a very few things in the in in wrestling worlds that I'm actually truly fans of, and he's one of them. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. And what what he's been doing to completely reinvent himself at this point in his career and how he, people still talk about him. God bless him, man. He's such a nice guy. It's, it's just incredible. He just says bro too much for me. He doesn't do it that much anymore. <laughs> He's like purposely trying to stop doing it. That's pretty funny. Well, he, 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 he has like new, like, again, he completely reinvents himself and he says new things. Like th- he had a match with Dan Moff on Friday night in Union. And Moff went in as, as the heel. Matt went in as the baby face. They completely flip flopped because uh, Moff took off his shirt and he had a Nick Gage shirt on. That pissed Broski off. Broski was like, "Like f this, f that." Pat 
Kevin Matthews, you better pat that. At. Like it, it, he, he became a heel in the middle of a match. He started out as a baby face and became a heel in the middle of a match. And then Dan Moff became a baby face in the middle of the match. So it was just so awesome. And again, I'll stop talking about it because I know people don't like to hear me wax poetic, but that's what it was. It was a fun night. Kev, look, I, I there, there's something we need to bring up and I don't know where to bring it up in the show. And I don't feel like ending the show on a downer. <laughs> but, I just started the show. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't want it to be where it's like, you know, like ending the show and it's like, oh, we, we need to talk about, you know, oh, okay. serious. I figured let's talk about it now. Let's just fucking get it out of the way. Put it behind us. With the two man army, baby. I know. And sometimes we just got to go into the trenches and it's tough. But, you know, considering what we do, we, we, we'd be crazy not to mention it. Uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, somebody that we're quite fond of uh, in the wrestling business. Uh uh, Daphne passed away last week. Um, and it was a, a pretty wild situation. Um, I don't know how much you really, whoa, did I just get really loud? I don't know how much you want to get into it, but, uh, I'll just start by saying this. If you, if any of you out there hearing our voices ever, ever, ever feels like nobody cares and nobody's listening and nobody knows what you're going through. Just remember, there's always somebody to reach out to. Just don't forget that. It was heartbreaking hearing everything that, that, that happened with Daphne. Um, you, you know, I think it was Wednesday. It was rough. It hurt so many people. Like so many people tried to get her help. It was just an unfortunate situation. And unfortunately we, we, we lost from all accounts, a really great person, you know? And I'm not going to sit here and pretend, I'm not going to lie to anybody. I watched it. It was sad yep. because like you heard her phone going off mm -hmm. like you heard it. And the fact that she felt that she was so far beyond help that she didn't answer those phone calls or those texts or whatever they were. It's absolutely depressing. Listen, I, we've all, I, I've been there. It's, it's terrible. Not to that level, but it's, it's not something you want to see. And the fact that I don't even know what to say. It, it was just bad. Like we're really good friends with Chris, For like Crowbar, like what he's going through, what Shane Helms is going through, what all of these people are going through, what her family's going through, her mother. Like it's, it's not an easy subject to talk about and it's far too common, but this is the first time that we've seen it play out in front of our very eyes. Yeah, and I think I think that's that that's really the strange thing about it. Um, you know, when somebody when somebody, you know, feels the need to go out on social media just to like, you know, not well, even well, a cry. Well, 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 what do you what do you do when you feel like no one's listening? What, what the only avenue you have is to do that. If you don't if in your head you don't think that anyone is there for you, and the only avenue that people will listen to you is to do that yeah like, and, and look like you said we've all been there we've all listened to some nasty thoughts in our heads i've know? had some sh tony i've had sh shitty fucking times in my life and I, I i'm not i'm not even done with them man like they're still there and it's just it's scary but i know i have you i know i have matt i know i have my family i know i have every i know rich mcdonald kp burke i have everyone in in my life that I know that I can talk to. Yep. And the fact that she thought that she didn't have anyone. And then when she dies, it, everyone was like, we were there. Like, yeah. we were there. We loved you. Everyone. And the real, the real sad part is help was on the way. Yeah. You know, they had reached out to her family. They reached out to the police. Uh, the problem was they couldn't find her. She had just moved. So uh, we yeah. have, you know, rescue going to locations where she's just not there anymore. And that's what really, you, look, you always wonder what if, and it's always hard. It's, it's easy to second guess, but it's hard to figure things, you know. It's, and I know, I know she was involved in the whole, you know, the, the whole CTE thing. And she made, she made that known that, you know, she wants she, you know, she wants to, you know, research to investigate her to see exactly what she was going through. But 
man, I don't know what else to say. It was, it was just really, it was sad. It was rough all around. And I just, for me, and I, I'm sure I speak for Kevin and Matt and everybody else, uh, you know, that's around the show and, and our community. You're not alone. Reach out. Even if you just reach out to the national helpline, yeah. somebody's there for you. A stranger, a freaking stranger will listen to you and make and try to make you feel better. And sometimes, you, you know, look, sometimes I know people like they need to hear it from somebody that's outside the bubble. And that's OK. Well, as long as you as long as you like think about it and just just try to hear it from somebody else. You'd be surprised what kind of difference it makes in your life. This will go down and I'm not trying to like make, you know, a ranking or whatever, but this is going to go down as one of the most tragic tragic stories in the history of, of professional wrestling and i'm not trying to i'm not trying to glorify it i'm not trying to put it in that kind of spin on it it like i'm almost i'm holding back tears right now like literally holding back tears from it because of how much it affected everyone like everyone there's not one person that was not affected by this if you were a wrestling fan or if yeah, you're involved in the business in any way especially in this area it's this area. It was the time frame because we all grew up on, you know, like late nineties, early two thousands, WCW. We're all familiar with who she was. We met her at, at numerous wrestle cons and, and, you know, like other wrestling conventions. And plus, I mean, she came up early in her, in the career, in her career with a good friend of ours in crowbar, yeah. you know, and this is really affecting him. I mean, you know, you look, you know, Crowbar, Shane Helms, Mick Foley. Mick Foley was, you know. Bobby Cruz put yeah. a, a, a tremendous heartfelt tribute to her out. It's, I mean, and, and, and Francine and Sonny and, and yeah. all of these people. Shelly Martinez, everyone. It like, was rough, man. It's, it's still rough. Just remember, you, you, the, despite what's in your head, you are not alone. Yeah. When it, listen, I, I, I don't tend to be like interactive like messaging and all that stuff but if listen man if i can help you i'll help you i mean i that might come across arrogant i don't even know but just like let me know man like if you think me talking to you or tony talking to you or matt talking to you or kate the great talking to you or anyone and from the mark or if anyone talks to you and that could help you it's it's no it's no skin off our teeth that's all i'm saying 100 percent, 100 percent I didn't. I didn't want to bring the show down, but I just no. But it, it had. We had to talk about it. Of course, I just. I just didn't know. And we're, plus, we're gonna have fun. I mean, Jay George uh, is calling in. And, and Jay George is calling in. We had a freaking incredible weekend of wrestling. Uh, I. I completely forgot to make picks for a show, so <laughs> that's. Uh, that's something. Okay, but be- before we get into New Japan, and, I, and look, I'm not covering it like Matt. I know Matt. You know, he gets his he gets his New Japan boners and he. And oh, yeah. He's very he, meticulous. Look, I love following New Japan and, and um, Kevin loves watching along with me. But nobody look, nobody else on the show is as big into New Japan as Matt is, despite the fact that I am the New Japan expert. The only reason why I said I'd pick the show is because I thought the text that said I say we pick it came from you. See, like Matt does look, I understand Matt's 20 games back, which by the way, he still is, so don't worry about it. Yeah, but um, you now you're like six or seven ahead of me now because I went, I went six because I forgot to pick a freaking show. But, but here, show and yo, here's right. what here's what destroys me though. After the first night, I genuinely took the lead and I was feeling good. I was like, yeah, I'm up. This is awesome. And then I wake up to Ha, ah, Kevin, you forgot to make your picks. I guess it was a good night at the poker tournament. <laughs> it was a great night at the poker tournament. And then I felt terrible. I was like, oh, man. Listen, I was hoping that you just shit the bed. That's all I was. I'm not worried about Matt. It I wasn't was, a great It wasn't a great night by, by any shape. Yeah, but, but you pulled ahead because I, I lost six I All lost I had to do matches. was, I mean, but here's the thing. Like, I pulled ahead the night before. So, like, if anything, if you would have got your picks in, maybe you might have just been hanging in there, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I may not have been in the lead, but I'd be maybe down two or three as opposed to six or seven. All right. Let me see. Let me see what I got here first. Well, first of all, if we're going to get into picks. Let's do it. Let me let me pull this up. It's time for the Shining Wizards pay-per-view pick extravaganza. New Japan's wrestle something something at MetLife Stadium nights one and two. Dude. 
first of all, the fact that there's something called MetLife Arena or MetLife Stadium in Japan really threw me off. I don't know about you. Yeah, me too. I was like, why Why are they playing in East Rutherford? Or why are they, why are they wrestling in East Rutherford, Japan? So here's the thing. It's called Wrestle Grand Slam in MetLife Dome. So that that that's what kind of threw me off. These shows were September 4th and 5th. They aired here at like 3 in the morning. But uh, Matt was insistent being 20 games back. Yeah. I say we picked these shows. I, say I we did not. Matt, Tony, I did not want to pick these. See, I, that's the other thing. Like, I always defer to you. I'm like, look, if Kevin wants to pick them, then, then I'll vote yes. I'd do the vote. same to you. <laughs> like, literally. Like, that's why I said I'll pick them. Because I literally thought the text came from you saying, I say we pick them. Cause this isn't like, this isn't a pay-per-view like, uh, and I'm not, I'm not, like, I, th- I think I did okay on the first night. No, no, we, we, we all did pretty okay. So for the first night you broke, you and Matt broke even, you both went three and three. Okay. I went five and one. So oh, those were the you. two matches that I pulled ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here, here real quick, let's go through the card. We had a special stardom exhibition match. Uh, Queen's Quest, which is an established tag team. It's Momo Watanabe and Saya Kamitani. They defeated Micah and Lady C. Uh, that's the only match that we all picked correct, by the way. All right. And the only reason I went with Queen's Quest was because they were taking on the tag champs on the next night. So I just, you know, like, I figured... the name Queen... I just like the name Queen's Quest. Queen's Quest is a cool name. We'll get into night two, though. I like the other team's name better, but we'll get into that. So... Robbie Eagles and Tiger Mask 4, Team Flying Tigers, uh, Tigers uh, <laughs> took on LIJ, which was uh, Takahashi and uh, mm-hmm. Bushi, uh, mm-hmm. representing LIJ. Sho defeated Yo, which was awesome. Uh, Yano uh, regained the, uh, the King of Pro Wrestling 2021 trophy when he defeated Chase Owens in a no DQI quit match. Jeff Cobb beat Kazuchika Okada, which was awesome. Hula hula pineapple guy. And of course... Tanahasho defended successfully the United States Championship against Kota Ibushi. So I went five and one. The only match I didn't pick was the uh, Team Flying Tigers. I think Matt was the only one that picked them. I, you and I both took the LIJ team of uh, Bushi and uh, Takahashi. Um, let me see. You and I took Sho. Matt took Yo, so he lost that. Matt and I took Yano. You took Chase Owens. You lost that one. That's right. I was the only one that took Hula Hula. You and Kev, you and Matt both went with Okada. I, I, and Tony, I deleted. I want. I, I always got to go with my gut. I deleted Cobb and put Okada. I deleted it. See, I figured. I figured at some point Okada and his group, not Okada, sorry, that Cobb and his group were going to start having to get some wins. And considered Cobb lost last time, uh, he might be ready to go up. And and sure enough, he did. And of course, uh, my reasoning, you and I both took Tanahasho. He beat Kotobushi. Matt took him. So fuck you, Matt. Um, the only reason I went with Tanahashi was because I figured they'd been moving toward Tanahashi against Moxley at some point for the U.S. title. So I didn't think they wanted to take the belt off him at this point. So that's I mean, why I'll take, I'll take your word for it. Well, I mean, look, like, like we'll get into it with all out later, but like they've been lining up all these Japanese wrestlers for Moxley to keep wrestling. Yeah. You know? So it's like, it's Nagata. And now it's going to be uh what's his nuts. Fucking... Minoru Suzuki. Yes. It's going to be Suzuki. Well, it was Kojima. Yeah. Well, Kojima, then, then it's going to be Suzuki. So I'm, I'm yeah. assuming at some point they're leading to, to Tanahasho. So. Which is yeah. a, actually, you know what? That's a brilliant idea, by the way. I have Tanahasho in, uh, and I have Moxley be like that guy that like, is like the the bridge between the two shows. I think it's genius. And they, if Moxie's clearly not going to be in the world title picture in AEW f- for a while now. So this is just as big a story as any world title you could have is him working with these guys from I- international waters, if you will. 100%. Um, so let's get into night two. Naito. Naito. So Queen's Quest actually had, I don't even know if it was for the titles, but uh, Donna Del Mondo, which is uh, Siori and Julia, which is a fucking great name for a Japanese wrestler. She's actually right. part Italian, half Italian. I forget what the deal is. I'll but Donna, De- Donna Del Mondo defeated Queen's Quest. Um, let me see. The United Empire, Great Okan and Jeff Cobb defeated uh, Okada and Big Tom Ishii. Uh, Suzuki Goon, which was El Desperado and uh, Kanemaru, Defeated Bullet Club, Ishimori and El Fantasmo for the junior heavyweight tag titles. Uh, meantime, did Dangerous Check, uh, Dangerous Techers, that fucking awful singer Taichi and Zack Sabre Jr. 
uh, defeated LIJ, which is Naito and Sonata, and Goto and Yoshihashi from Chaos in a triple threat match to retain the IWGP uh, Tag Team Championship. Robbie Eagles, in a surprise to me, defeated Takahashi to retain the junior heavyweight title. And of course, Takagi defeated Evil with Dick to go to retain the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Kevin, we'll start with you. Kevin, you did not pick any of these, correct? Because you did not pick any of these. So you went a whopping 0 for 6. Nope, I totally forgot. to send it. All I had to do was just copy and paste from some sort of website, and I could have got it done in five seconds. You could have just... You could have just copied my picks. I could have. Uh, Tony, I literally <laughs> thought about that today. I was like, all I had to do was copy and paste Tony's picks or Matt's picks and got it in. I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's busy. I don't know if it's brain farts. I don't know what it was. Cause well, I, I almost got like picks late in some other time recently too. I think. Uh, yeah, well, you almost missed the NWA picks from the, when our shadows fall pay-per-view cause you forgot it started at four. That's right. Anyway, so you went 0 for 6. Matt and I both went 3 for 3. The uh, the two matches we both picked was for the uh, Donna Del Mundo team, Del Mondo, uh, and we both took uh, Shingo to retain against Evil. Uh, then we wound up splitting the difference. Uh, Matt took Great Okan and Cobb. I actually went with Okan and Ishii, so Matt won that one. Uh, we both took uh, El Fantasmo and uh, Taiji, um, but Suzuki Goon retained. That was for the junior tag titles. Uh, I took, um, I took, wait, I can't even read my fucking writing. I took Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, Matt took Chaos, so I won that one. And we both took Takahashi to regain the junior championship, and Robbie Eagles won that match. Who did I take in that match, Matt, uh, Tony? Uh, no one. <laughs> ah, hmm. <laughs> That's a shame. So yeah, so so um, for the for the two nights just of New Japan, uh, Matt went uh, six and six. You went three and nine, and I went eight and four. So, right, so we'll, get into, we'll get into the totals when we talk um, the, the next show later when we get into AW All Out. But uh, gotcha. Suffice to say, I'm five games up on you at this point. At four. Right, so, <laughs> so instead of instead of talking about it then, we'll we'll just talk about it now. We'll tease well, it then, but we'll just you know why? Be, no, because I, I was able to do the addition in my head while I was filibustering. So I said, "Fuck it, let's just let's just mention it." But it gets worse, <laughs> Kev. Don't worry about it; it'll get worse. Oh, no, uh, no. <laughs> see, now I feel bad. Now, if I wind up winning for the year, I'm gonna feel really bad because it's it's a fucking bummer, you know. I'm gonna no, have it's, it's my fault. It's, yeah, it's, but I'm gonna have another asterisk next to my win. No, no, you won't. The asterisk will it won't be an asterisk, it'll be like K I D or Kevin Idiot <laughs> doesn't Dummy. pick when he's supposed to. K I D. I mean the kid. The kid Kevin idiot doesn't pick. Holy shit. Well, that was that was the uh ooh, boy, the Russell Grant. That was New Japan, Japan right? <sighs> That in was a new nutshell. That was New Japan in a nutshell. Now I know, I know, fucking uh, Dick Stain gave me gave me a ton of notes, but uh, let me let me see if I could pull up New Japan real quick. It shouldn't take too long. Let me see, because uh, he's very he's very verbose when it comes to his notes. It, no, this is, these are long, bro. Yeah, they are long ass notes. Like, okay, it's almost so- like he doesn't trust us to have a good show when we're when he's not here. He really doesn't. He really doesn't. Ah. <laughs> Here's the big note. So New Japan Strong, which is their U.S. show, is moving from Friday nights to Saturday nights. It's moving from Friday 10 p.m. to Saturday at 8, which means nobody's going to be watching it. That starts on September 18th. I don't know about you, Kev, but I got shit to do on Saturday night. Um, bu- 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 I will be home. Oh, you know why they moved it? Because of... Uh, because Yo, cause of UFC and uh, a boxing match, right? No, 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 they moved it. No, that's AEW moving their pay-per-view or some... Uh, what did, what did you say? No, no, I don't know. He's got in his notes here. Uh, it became crowded because Rampage started, SmackDown's on, 205 Live is on. It's all clogged up Friday night, so they moved to Saturday. Probably Who moved to Saturday? I don't... New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey. Jesus, fuck. New Japan Strong. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. That's their gotcha, US gotcha, um, bah, 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 bah. regulars including Will Ospreay, Juice Robinson, Dave Finley. It's like he's fucking sending a press release for this shit. Uh, Will Ospreay suffering from mild COVID nineteen symptoms. I'm sure he'll be back. He seems to be fine. He was actually uh out for his neck injury, and he's vaccinated, so his symptoms aren't terrible. But of course, they have to keep him off because uh, yeah, still spread that son bitch. 
COVID. Yes. Um, so here you go. All uh, right. What do we got? T Dog. United right. Empire Stable. So Will Ospreay and a mystery partner will be taking on Carl Fredericks and Clark Connors, which means that Will Ospreay and his, mil- his uh, mystery partner will be winning at the September 26th New Japan Strong Autumn Attack in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, let me see. B Priestley, she got kicked out of the uh, United Empire. So it's Osprey, Jeff Cobb. Um, let me see. Bah, 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 bah. I don't know, dude. There's a whole fucking bunch of notes here. I'm skipping all this. <laughs> uh, Never up weight champion Jay Wright. Jay White will be taking on Daniel Garcia for the September 26th show. Tom Lawler uh, takes on Ren Narita. Uh, Juice Robinson, Leo Rush, Clark Connors, TJP versus Hikuleo, Chris Bay, Taichi Ichimori, and El Fantasmo, an eight man match. This is all going on. So, here, so here's your autumn attack shows it's Minoru Suzuki versus Fred Rosser, Will Ospreay, Carl Fredericks, Tom Lawler, Rev Renita, and that four, that eight man tag match I just talked about. September 26th, Jay White versus Daniel Garcia, Will Ospreay and his mystery partner against Fredericks and Connors, Leo Rush versus Taiji Ishimori. And uh, also McNoro, McNoro, Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer take on Tom Lawler and Royce mm. Isaacs. There's a name we haven't heard from a while. Good for him. Uh, let me see. You know, this whatever, whatever New Japan is doing in the States is giving a lot of people more chances to work. Let me see. Just, just an announcement real quick. We know Toriano won the uh, King of Pro Wrestling title back after beating Chase Owens. Uh, we also know now that show turned on yo and show made uh show one over yo by referee stoppage. So evil uh Yujiro Takahashi and Dick to go offered him a bullet club shirt. So now show is with the bullet club and no longer with chaos. And that whole group is now called the house of torture. So Ooh. that's like a little subgroup within the bullet club. Look, man, show's fucking awesome. I'm glad he's doing big things. That's why I'm wearing my show shirt tonight. So I'm a fucking show mark. Deal with yeah, it. Yeah, House of Torture shirts. You're going to get a House of Torture shirt, Tony? Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> Just I wish I would tell- remember to get it during the Pro Wrestling tea sale because I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, well, good luck because it'll take like a month and a half to get here. Well, at this point, yeah, because there's quite yeah. a few other shirts that are sold out and continue to sell. Kevin, I know Yo. the early scuttlebutt is that for WrestleMania 38, they want to do it as another two-night affair, right? Yes, sir. Not to be outdone, New Japan Pro Wrestling announces Wrestle Kingdom 16 this year will not be one night, not be two nights, but it's going to be three nights. Ah. January 4th and 5th are going to be at the Tokyo Dome. Night three is going to be at the Yokohama Arena. So they're making fucking plans for this big thing. This is going to be fucking cool. I don't know how much more wrestling they want to put on, but Jesus, that's a lot of fucking wrestling, is it not? Whew. All right. So here's how you have to look at it, in my opinion, because I'm I just I'm literally from your mouth to my ears. That's literally the first time I'm hearing that it's going to be three nights. Depends on how you look at it. If 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 you create a different identity for each night, I don't think it's terrible. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you but it's still it's going to be branded as Wrestle Kingdom and it's three nights. But people wrestling has become a destination. Like it's become a destination event to go to. So WrestleMania two nights, Wrestle Kingdom two nights, Wrestle Kingdom three nights, uh, you know, NXT TakeOver, you know, Royal Rumble, whatever it is. Wrestling has become a destination where if you're going to go, you're going to go for more than one night now. And that's the thing, like, I don't, I don't mind WrestleMania being two nights. I think that's a smart idea. It really is. But Kev, three nights? That's, That's Look, I get it. The, the third night is like three days, is like two days removed from the second night. So Wait, is it, it? Yeah, it's it's the fourth, the fifth, and then the eighth. What? Yeah, because you know, like like New Japan always goes like right into the next thing. Like, I don't know if they call it new beginnings or new seasons. Well, or, isn't isn't after Wrestle Kingdom, isn't it like the dash or something like that? Like, isn't there like a yes, New, New Year's dash? dash is right after that? You're right. You're fucking wow! You're the you're the New Japan expert. That's right. Man. That's right. That's why I, that's why I go zero for six. Well, oh, I, mean, I forget the good. I forget to pick him. But See, I this am, is but... the thing. Like like Matt gets on the show and he's talking shit in the Facebook, so he can go fuck himself. He didn't want to be on the show tonight, but he's going to he talk shit in the Facebook. Of course he is, fucking dickhead. Anyway, Tony, I'm not gonna lie to you. He's this is the same Tony. No, Tony. He's he has the right to do that because you do that all the time. No, all right. Look, fair enough. I think I've gotten better on that. But look. <laughs> It's easy for Matt to get on here and go, this is what's happening. It's more fun 
for two of us to sit here and try to piece all this together and figure it out. And everybody gets to play along at home and everybody fucking learns something, That's right? That's right. We're, we are just pontificating here. We are fucking pioneers. We are just pontificating, not knowing exactly what is happening in the world. So I will volley to you, Tony, in terms of how you feel about New Japan Pro Wrestling, because I absolutely know nothing about it. So I will volley to you, sir. This is, this is, goddamn, fucking double nights, triple nights, fucking wrestling in Japan, motherfucker, five stars. <laughs> Double stars, double Japan, double fucking Wrestle Kingdom, motherfucker. Well, Jim Cornette, if I may volley, sir, <laughs> the more, there's a rule called Holy law shit. of averages. So the more wrestling you put out, the odds are you will make more money and or have more five-star matches ranked by Dave Meltzer, who sucks, sir. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, right, Kev, before we get there, I do have to talk about the G1 Climax. We've already got the participants for this year. Uh, Let me see. It's going to begin on September 8th, 18th in Osaka. It's going to include, it's going to conclude, include Jesus at Mm -hmm. Budokan Hall and talk. Wow. No wonder Matt can't get through this. Budokan Hall in Tokyo, Thursday, October 21st. And of course, two blocks. The winner of block A takes on the winner of block B. Kevin, here are your 20 participants in the blocks. Oh, I got it. Well, can I read them? Oh, yes, please, please. All right. So we got the A block, correct? Yes. Kota Abushi. Bing. Tomohoro. <laughs> Tomatishi Tatoshi. That's Tom. That's Tom Ishii. That's Big Tom. Oh, that's Ishii. Oh, it's Big Tom. Big Tom. Toro Yano, who I. That's Yano, yes. I, who I predict wrong. Uh, Shingo Takagi. Uh, Tetsuya Naito. Oh, Naito. All right, you're getting there. Good. Uh, listen, I, I, I don't know him. I never hear him called by his first name ever. It's Naito. Oh. Uh, Zach Sabra oh. Jr. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> the Great Kool Aid. The Great. Oh, another Great Okan. Uh, Kanta. Contra. Really? Uh, Tangalio. Kanta. And <laughs> Fanta. Uh, you, know, you, know you know what Kanta's wife's name is? <laughs> <laughs> In Europe, talk a uh, hash brown. Hash browns? Hash, I, I know, know seriously. Hash browns. Kota, Kota Ibushi, Ishii, Yano, Takagi, Naito, Zack Saber Jr., <sighs> The Great Okan, Kenta, Tangaloa, and uh, Takahashi is in blo- uh, block A and block B. Oh, you're going for another one? <laughs> oh, let's do it. Let's ride, baby. Fuck yeah. Wait, why is he in both? Oh, no, he's not. They're he's not. not. No, they're, right. Kev, they're not no, all no, the same. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we have Ton uh, Hash Brown. Ton of Hash Brown. Oh, related to Taka Hash Brown. Exactly. They're family. <laughs> uh, we have Ka- Kazuki. Oh, Kitty. Uh, we have Hiroki go to home because you're late for curfew. We have uh, y- Yoshi's World. Um, we have a uh, uh, Son- oh, I can't really mess this up. Sonata. <laughs> it's all in caps. Can't fuck that up. Uh, tai Chi. Sonata. Sonata. Jeff Cop. Evil. Uh, Tama 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 Chameleon, come and go. Now you see if Tama Tama goes, if he goes to AEW, that's going to be his theme song. Bank on. Yeah. Tama 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 Kalani, and then we have the Chase version of Owen. So that's only one of five hundred, as opposed to your normal Chase Owens, which is widely found in Target. No, seriously. Uh, Tanahashi, Okada, Goto, uh, Yoshihashi, Sonata, Taichi, Jeff Cobb, Evil. Tamatanga and Chase Owens is block B for that event. So it looked to have a little fun, but it was, it's, it, listen, it, when I get in my cycle for New Japan, I enjoy it. So uh, it, it's pretty cool. This is always according, a fun time of year for them. According to Matt's copious notes, uh, the great Okan, Tangaloa, and uh, Chase Owens are making their debuts. Now, of course, winner of block A faces winner of block B in the finals. They win the briefcase to get the shot at the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship which is the brand new championship uh, melding the Intercontinental 
and IWGP championships together. Now that briefcase has to be defended. So there Ooh. you go. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, my boy, Abushi wound up losing it to uh, fuck Jay white. And uh, then it was, <laughs> it was the kindness of, uh, of Naito that gave Abushi the first title shot, which he won the champion. The, he won both titles at Wrestle Kingdom night one. And then on night two, he beat Matt's fuck boy, Jay white, because fuck Jay white. And there you go. <laughs> so this will be the first time it's for the IWGP world heavyweight championship title shot. Of course, currently held by the fucking awesome guy named, known as uh, Shingo Takagi. So there you go. I hope that's all the fucking news and notes from New Japan. Because I'm fucking tired of talking about them. Kev, I'm going to ask you this. Because Jay, oh. Jay George is due to call at 8 o'clock. Now, I don't feel the need to run commercials. We could do a speed round of fucking uh, Patreon producers if you want. I could talk about the shows on the Shining Wizards Network if you want. Uh, unless you got to go take a pee break. If you got to go pee, I'll start with the Patreon plug. So it's up to you, my man. Well, I mean, the pee break is either going to happen now or somewhere where it might not be beneficial to the show. So if, if you brought it up, I feel like it would only be beneficial to do it now. Okay, that sounds good. So as we always say, Kevin will be back after this. But you see, folks, I'm not going anywhere because you know why? It's time uh-huh. for a sp- Oh, I thought you were going to pee, dude. I thought you were chiming out. Oh, no, I mean, I am, but yeah, yeah go, pee. Right. go, go right, pee. And get back in time for, for your for your for your plug. You know what you got to do. Kevin will be back in time for that. I feel like I should put some music to this. Last time I did it, I really didn't have too much music. Let me pull up something from the archives while I'm doing that. In the meantime. While I'm pulling up a song to use this week, don't forget about all the great shows on the Shining Wizards Network, all the shows that are friends with us. We're talking uh, we're talking Mike Norengonger and Cal, our pal Calvin Brody over at the Midnight Jury. We're talking about Anthony Russinello, Kate the Great, and of course that fucking dickhead who couldn't join us tonight, Matt, doing the Mark Order podcast on Wednesdays. Egg inclusive breakdown on Sundays with Justin and Vince. Turnbuckle throwbacks with Jay and Phil. We bust Phil's balls a lot, but he fucking loves it. He keeps coming back for more. That's our boys on Friday nights. Snowy's got a double dose of kick ass for you. Friday mornings with Radioactive Metal. Wrestling Night in Canada, whenever the boys decide to get together. And of course, Ringside Rant also every Friday morning. RJ's doing a great job there. And last but not least, our boys from Australia on the broadcast. They may not be part of the network, but they're part of our family as well. Make sure you check those guys out. Of course, they don't spell it with a C. They spell it with a K. You know what? I think I found some fucking... Oh, man, this music sucks. You know what? Uh, yeah, we'll do something a little different today. Mr. Kennedy! There we go. Something a little different. We are the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. Shiningwizards.com. We are available on all forms of social media. And folks, if you're liking what you're listening to, if you're liking what you're watching, if you're like being involved in our community, don't forget to check us out on the Twitter. Easiest thing to do, twitter.com slash Wizards Podcast. There's a link for our Discord family to join us there on Discord. If you're one of the Discordant people, we'd love to have you along. We're constantly talking about everything pro wrestling and pretty much everything else. We got a book club. We got a DDP yoga club, which is also for all kinds of fitness. If you want to be accountable, if you want to be held accountable by us knuckleheads, come on and join us. We got everything you can imagine. We're talking music. We're talking books. We're talking exercise. We're talking about anything you want to talk about. And we don't care if you use potty language. Just don't come in there and be an asshole, okay? Open to everybody. We're all inclusive unless we don't fucking like it. And we're going to kick your ass out. I'm kidding. Join us over on that. Join us over on Facebook, facebook.com slash lose podcast. And like I said, if you're liking what you're hearing, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast. You can join us for as little as $1 a month and become a Patreon producer. We got all kinds of goodies and bonuses if you're going to join us at higher levels. $3 a month, you're getting access to our bonus show archive. Archive shows exclusive to our Patreon supporters. And plus, you get four new episodes every month. We've been slacking a little bit because of summertime, but the summertime's over. We're getting back. We just did a profile on Victoria and New Blood Rising from the dying days of WCW. Make sure you go check that out. Check out our entire archive. Five bucks, we will plug your shit. Ten bucks, twenty bucks. Matt will send you a box of wizardry every three months. As a matter of fact, I think he might be sending out some goodies uh, to all of our Patreon supporters that will be available for everybody soon. Just keep an eye out for that. Shh. 
You didn't hear that from me because I wanted to tell you. I wanted to be the first one to tell you. Anyway, it is time to thank those who support us over at The Shining Wizards. We are talking about our Patreon producers. We're talking about Kathy Hummer, the queen of the wizards. Manny Kratzo, he's the king of the wizards. Anthony and Danny Rusinello, the AOP of the SWP. Sean Toe and Sean Calejo. Brett Simonello. What do you hear? What do you, what do you say? say? Holy shit, Kevin, you're back. You scared the fuck out of me. That's right. Holy cow. Sean Toe. Sean Calejo. I mentioned them already because I'm a fucking idiot. I'm reading the list wrong. Matt Garifo, No relation to the K. J. G. Kate Hensler at On Deck IC. She's got fucking podcasts for years. She's got podcasts for millennia. But if you need shit promoted, if you need help getting your business online anywhere, you need music, you need graphics, Kate is your hookup. And please, if you talk to her, holler if you hear her. That's my mm-hmm. fucking blessing to you guys. Uh, we talked about Matt Carifo. We got Matt Mellinger. We got Christine Friesendorf. Kevin, we got Mark Parloni. Well, I want to say happy birthday, Mark, but it was actually Friesendorf's birthday like yesterday. Or the so day then before. say happy birthday to Christine. Happy Friesendorf. birthday, Mark. <laughs> happy birthday, Friesendorf. Kenny Hawsey, the Scotch drinks more of the Shining Wizards. Jay Cop, the big copper pump. He's the fucking greatest thing on the turnbuckle throwbacks, no doubt. Thomas Cops, the Mott Spock, Milwaukee Tom, the man of a thousand nicknames. Uh, let me see. Some Michael Hammond, uh, Matthew Burge, uh, the True Prince of Pro. Braden Bergeron, he, isn't he the fucking LeBron James collector guy thing? I don't know. That's Matt yep. Schick. Matt's not here, whatever. We got Brendan Heaney. We got Ryan Schlong. And I forgot to mention him as part of that great fucking show on Wednesday nights. He shows up as often as Matt does these days. But he's part of the Mark Order podcast. Fucking great guy. Always rocking it inside the Discord as well. You can meet most of these folks there. Everybody's part of our community. Kevin, the one that I do need to mention. And I'm going to mention it. Except me. I'm not part of the community. No, except for Kevin, because yeah, Kevin right. hates everybody. His pal Antonio Hosserman makes experimental music at harvestmanrecords.bandcamp.com. Kevin, he is the one and only William Mercier Jr. Lives are going to be people, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, farm animals, friends, clowns, clerks, Cast members of films in William Mercier's hands. You know what I mean? Kevin, I do know what you mean. That's right. Great community we have going together. Even if you can't support us monetarily, we love the kind of support that's real easy to do from behind your keyboard. A click, a like, a subscribe. Yeah. Go watch the episodes over on YouTube. We've been getting hundreds of views. It's fucking crazy. People actually want to sit down and watch us over and over again. They Which want is to kind of why I'm wearing my, you know, my handsome uh, show shirt. Yeah, they want to look at our ugly mugs. God bless you. Well, you, I mean, you're look, you're the handsome one on the show. <laughs> you, no, dude, you really. I bet you if we put that shit out there on a poll, like like Judy Bagwell on a poll, you'd fucking win that shit. Dude. Forklift. You got to put me on a forklift. Fucking a, dude. Like me, we'll like, about- like Matt and I. If we were not married, we'd be fighting for your scraps, dude. Like, really. We'd be in trouble at closing time. Let's put it that mm, way. That's a good point. Well, maybe maybe Matt more than me. I, you know. No, Tony, you're a handsome guy. Thank you, sir. No, you're you're. I'll throw the compliments when right back when when they're deserved. Matt was a handsome guy once. Yeah, he used Matt used to be a looker. I don't know what the fuck yeah. happened to him. I remember him back in the old days, the old the old bar uh, the old bar hopping days. Good looking guy. Yeah. Now, me. Too many fucking Hello Fresh boxes. Yeah, too many purple mattresses. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Matt, we love Matt. No, nah, listen, Matt. Listen, the fact that Matt hasn't killed me yet, I have no idea <laughs> how that hasn't happened. But I love him, and uh, I always will. So there's that. Look, we we look. I'm I fuck him. Now he's gonna get pissed off. I'm breaking kayfabe. We break Matt's balls all the time, but Matt is fucking good people. Oh, he's the glue, man. He's the glue. Especially, he's when, the he foundation. Us, especially when he sticks us to talking with Jay George when he's not here. <laughs> after, yeah. he fucking, after he told Jay George, if you fucking make dad jokes, I'm gonna fucking hang up yeah. on him. Well, well, guess what? <laughs> fuck face. You're not here to hang up on him tonight. So I'm telling him to fucking let loose, baby. Yeah. Jay George has free range. Jay George could do whatever he wants on this show. He could even show us his pecker. I wouldn't even care. Uh, well, I would. 
Well, I, I would put would. the line at that. <laughs> That's where you draw the line? That's where I would draw the line. Yes. I don't need a JPEG. <laughs> That's the name you've, of heard, the you've, heard, you've heard of JPEGs? I don't need a JPEG. JPEG is the name of the show tonight. Let me write right. that down. <laughs> JPEG. JPEG Cinematic Universe. There we go. Don't need a JPEG. Actually, J. George should be uh, calling us in the next minute or two. It's uh, at J. George, the movie. Great friend of the show. He's been grinding. Dude, I mean, like, we all know that the wrestlers that we speak to all have, like, other stuff that they do to grind. Um, You know, whether it's, like, other shoot jobs, whether it's even just doing, like, things on Twitch. You know, like, a lot of them are into gaming now, so there's a lot of gaming channels. Like, I know Mikey Whipwreck every weekend now. He's playing Fortnite and it's, it's cool. It's cool to see people like, like actually opening up their outside interests to folks like us to be like, Hey, we're, you know, we're just more than wrestlers. And I bring this up just for the fact that J George, honestly, he's a creative genius. He is like so over the top with stuff that he does, like follow him on social media. It's great stuff. Just yeah, watching yeah. him the way he puts things together and edits things. Amazing. And I, I totally have so much respect for people that actually go out of the way to use technology to their advantage. And I feel like we like kind of grew up, like you're really good at it. Matt's really good at it. But like I was, and I was good at it at a time, but then it, it just changed so much. And like, now I'm just like, I'm so far behind. I'm just like, like, I don't even know what to, I don't even know where to start, where to begin, where, and where J George is just constantly learning and, and evolving and, and doing all these things with his with his, with his social media presence and his camera work and all this stuff and it's just it's just really good and he's he's, he's a talented guy like a lot of people don't know what he kind of does behind the scenes for a lot of people so like it's really cool to, to and it's always a pleasure to have him on and, and when he calls in I can't wait so did your ring just move by itself yeah well it's tied on to a string because it's covering like plumbing so like I try to like I can can you hide, wait, are you hiding your return? Because that, I, like, that pipe is there every week. Now you're hiding now it. Now I'm hiding it because I feel like I could, I could probably hide. No, I didn't. Because uh, I'm an idiot, Tony. Like, understand? I'm not too bright, right? So, like, you're smart, I, Kevin. Don't. I don't, decided don't to, yourself. I decided to start hiding it with maybe like a different T-shirt every week. I got the Hawkins shirt there. Dear good personal friend Brian Myers. Of course. And uh, and uh, you know the 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 Rumble ring, the monster ring, and then I have the raw ring underneath that. You can't see it. But uh, um, but it's covering this giant pipe, and I just wanted to, you know. I mean, I, listen, I'm in a basement. I'm not. I'm not trying to deny anybody. I'm in a freaking man's basement with a tool shed behind me that I've completely taken over with action figures. So it's. I'm just trying to make it look a little different. Okay. I don't even know what that. I don't even know what that wire is behind me hanging down. Huh. Yeah, maybe you want to get that checked. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> Oh no, it's the cord from it's this. Never mind. It's not behind me. It's in front of me. Oh, that. that's from the that's from yeah, the it's, it's the mic. Yeah, it looked like it was behind me. I thought you were talking guys. about something across the back there. It looked like you had a wire, but that might that might just be the lid of a box. You know, my eyes ain't so good. I'm getting old. Well, I, I, so I have like this weird like little Christmas present box with my nameplate yes. for my old job. Yes. Above it. Then I have like the edge, the edge heads figure. I have the macho figures. I have the, the you know, Hawkins figure. Uh, I got Santana and Ortiz down here. I got this bad boy, which I don't. I should prom and I should promote. This is an expensive. This, cool. this is an expensive figure. This is a very rare figure in and it's, on card. And it's even got the uh, the RF on the stand. That's yeah. really fucking swank. That's awesome. This is like two hundred bucks. And Rich McDonald got this for me for Christmas back when it first came on the shelves for like maybe like fifteen. So yeah. I, I have this bad boy hanging up. That's fun. Well, I don't have too much hanging in the studio. I was showing Kevin uh, before we started uh, that we're, we're in a little bit of shambles here, but we're, we're slowly getting it back together. Yeah, well, one day one day I'll make a, a, a decent little place out of it. We just gotta, there's just so much to do. Did you see um, Matt's pictures of all the new stuff he's got in his office now? He's got like know. a new shelf with like all the AEW figures on it and stuff, and He's got like a neat little desk now with everything set up. It looks really cool. Yeah, Matt's nuts. Like Matt's like like Matt's cr- <laughs> like like no no no. I'm Matt's serious. Nuts. And it, it, 
in like in the best possible way <laughs> I can say in terms of his figure, like fandom, like he puts me to shame. And I've said this, I've said this to Hawkins and I've said it to Ryder. Like I'm a figure fraud. I get what I get, but I don't have like a, like I'm not getting everything. Matt gets everything and it's awesome. And I appreciate the heck out of it. So like, it's, it's, it's insane. Like I just actually got a, uh, a Nova signed figure, uh, his ECW figure, Nova Bucci, his uh, his figure signed. Oh, I'll, I'll name drop. I gotta get. I'm I'm gonna make. I'm gonna, I'll write it like in chalk if I have to on a T-shirt. Name drop, like. Uh, but so I got that. So like I have I have weird rules in my collecting. I don't collect any current things unless they've been on the show. So like that's all I get. Unless then I'll get Hasbro's LJN's Bone Crunchers but I don't collect anything current unless they've been on the podcast. Um, I, I normally don't use the at wizards podcast account on Twitter, um, but I'm just checking. I'm just making sure that J George is remembering to join us tonight. I'm sure he'll be, and he might be just running a little late uh, checking on that. All right. So I need to, I need to do a little aside first. We had a, oh, conversation, let's do it. we had a little conversation last week about laundry and I don't know why it came up, Oh but I was in the kitchen before with my wife. We were, uh, she was doing the dishes. I was cleaning the table and I go, you know, Matt and Rhiannon are fucking strange when it comes to laundry. She's like, why? I'm like, they do their laundry separate from each other. And she, oh, almost, that's right. she almost dropped the dish. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, Matt said like Rhiannon just doesn't let him do her laundry and like vice versa. And I'm, and I'm like, I, I explained to them, look, I said, there's stuff that you don't want me to do because you might think I mess it up. But by and large, it's just everything all at once. She's like, they really seriously like do like their own laundry. I'm like, yeah. She's like, so they don't do each other's laundry. I'm like, no. She's like, that's so strange. I'm like, I know. And that's what I said. And I thought I was fucking nuts. Uh, well, I, I don't have that problem because I'm 38 and single. No, I get it. And I think I lost you. Are you there? Uh, no, no. Yeah, we're good. Up a little bit. I, I, I got these stupid cheap like uh, earbuds from like CVS and they, the, oh, the no. cords are way the cords are way too long for what I need them for. So they always get in the way. Um, but no, see, I don't have that issue. I do my laundry for myself. I don't know. I didn't mean to bring it up. I just I just finally got her her thoughts on it. I don't know what made me think of it either. I'm just like, hey, you know, they don't do their laundry. Oh, no, it's, it's it's a story that needs to be told. Of course, I think. Yeah, but I think it should probably... be it should be a thirty for thirty on ESPN. <laughs> All right, let's not go that far. No, it will be the the laundry loners. Oh, there you go. I don't know. It just, it just, it doesn't. I'm, I'm like, all right, look, if they're doing their laundry once a week, maybe it's like economical, like, but we're doing laundry every fucking day, dude. Because yeah, there's three of us in the house and like, we're taking like two showers a day sometimes. Like, I know it's a lot, but you know, so we're talking, uh, dude, I about, take, I take two showers a day, every day. It's easy. I take one in the morning and then typically it'll be like later in the day, especially after I do like a session of yoga. Like if I, if I work out at night, <laughs> definitely okay. taking a shower. I, so I take I take a shower in the morning, obviously because I, I it wakes me up, it helps me refresh. But then when I get home from work, uh, maybe around six six thirty, I'll take another shower because my hair is obviously getting longer, and the conditioner and the shampoo and the the gel the, the product I put in my hair is completely annoying to get out in the morning. So I do that to, at night, so it makes my shower in the morning uh, shorter. I get it. I get so, it. But on top of that, too, like you're also like you're in a fucking place where there's probably a lot of people coming and going all the time. So. Oh, when in the, in the height of the pandemic, I would literally strip in, in, in the basement and go up and take a shower. And that's what a lot of people were doing. We were doing yeah. that, too. Like if we went out for grocery shopping and shit, you know, yeah. and I still do it. Like I still I make mean, like maybe not as urgent, but before I'm, I know them to be around other people after work, I will still take a shower sometimes like if I come home, like if I go out and get groceries, if I make a run somewhere, like I won't stay in those clothes, especially if I was out for a while, like I'll just come home and I just like throwing on like gym shorts and a t-shirt anyway. Like I don't like, Oh yeah. I don't like wearing like cargoes and, and no. things around the house, you know? Well, I mean, Tony, you might be the only one still wearing cargoes. So I like my cargo shorts. They come in Listen, hand. They're very convenient. Look, 
I don't I don't wear my mask a lot of places because I'm vaccinated. But if I need a mask, it's in one of the cargo pants, like one in the pockets. Psh, done. Yeah. No, no, listen, I, I ain't judging nobody, but I'm just saying, like, uh, car, wait, cargo pants or cargo shorts? No, no, shorts, not okay. pants. Okay. I don't wear cargo pants. You're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> Look, I would love to see you in a pair. Of, I would love to see you in a pair of car, cargo pants. pants. You know what sucks? Before the pandemic started, I went off the deep end just buying strange pants. Like I bought a pair of like Jeff Hardy like, pants, like green pants and blue pants. And like, I just went nuts with all these different colors. I'm like, yeah, these look kind of cool. And then I had nowhere to wear them to because the pandemic started. I bought a pair of blue pants to go to a wedding. Cause that was like the trend. Like they were really actually really expensive freaking pants from Lord and Taylor's. Ooh, fancy yeah. man. Oh, I had to, <laughs> cause I had this idea of what I wanted to wear. And I needed blue pants to do it, like leave a bait. So I had to do it, right? Isn't wasn't she blue pants? She was blue pants. Yep. Yeah, so I, ha- I had to do it. But anyway, so I guess Jay George is not calling in. I don't know, and I really have no way to reach out to him. You know, like. Uh, so do you want to? You want to just go right into the the meat and potatoes of why we're like why this weekend was so incredible? New login alert. What's that? Uh oh. Oh, that was probably me because I logged into the Twitter. Oh, okay. I was checking, I was checking for messages from Jay George. You know, I can, um, if you want to start, let me just text dickhead real quick and I'll ask him if, uh, if you know, no, no, why don't I just text Jay George? Oh, look at you. All right. Yeah. Text him. See what he's up to. See if he, if he's not calling in or whatnot. Tell him we could promote it without him. If he really wants us to, I got no problem with that. Oh, he's, he literally just, te- he literally got in touch with me. what did he say? He's running late. He, sa- he-, he said, yo, I've been messaging you guys. And he said he never got a link. He, oh yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I could, I could tweet, I could text you the link, and then you could send it over to him. Okay. All right. Don't mind us, folks. It's fucking technology. Whatever. I don't, I don't know what else to say. Let me see. Zoom meeting information. Oh boy. You would think he would have it already because he's fucking constantly calling into the show and everything. Wait, is it even a link or is it just a login and the password? Yeah. Just, just send them that. Just copy pasta. All right. All right. You got it, right? I just sent yeah, it yeah, over. I'm on it. I'm on top of that, Rose. Okay. So what Kevin is talking about, wait, wait, Kevin wait, is talking one, about the one. greatest news that we got this week. Actually, two bits of news. Number one, Tajiri will be joining MLW on October 2nd. Yes, that Tajiri, the Japanese buzzsaw, currently wrestling in all Japan pro wrestling, is coming to MLW. But that is not the biggest news. On the October 2nd show, we are finally, finally getting Jacob Fatu defending his MLW World Championship against the National Openweight Champion, Alexander Hammerstone. And Kevin, this match is WrestleMania 6. This bitch is title for title. Winner takes all. Hammerstone versus Fatu. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the story in MLW, and we're getting it on October 2nd. Kevin, any thoughts on Hammerstone finally getting that title shot? I mean, I mean, how long have we been talking about this? Probably longer than the Von Erichs Tom Lawler feud. I got no listen, it's what we it's what we needed. It's what wrestling needed in in, in this area, and I have I can't wait for it. I'm I, I'm actually I'm not a huge MLW guy. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just don't watch it. But I'm this. I'm here for it, as they say, as the young kids say. I'm here for it. So here's the thing: Fatu's been champ since July 2019 when he beat Tom Lawler, um, and and Hammer is the only inaugural and current open weight champion. He won that in June 2019 when he beat Brian Pillman in the title tournament finals. Kev, this is October 2nd. This is at Fightland in Philadelphia. Of course, there's going to be 5,000 hours of MLW tapings uh, after this show. But make no mistake, this is the one that everybody's been talking about. This is the one everybody's been waiting for. Finally, big payoff. Hammerstone, I 100%, no doubt in my mind, he's winning this thing. And the only question I have for you is, are we picking Fightland? Is it a pay-per-view? I have no idea. Maybe. If it's a pay-per-view, then yeah. Like if it's available on fight, maybe as a pay-per-view, 
pay-per-view if it's available and if it's available actually see pay-per-views have become such a subjective term nowadays it's so crazy like like i didn't want to pick this new japan stuff but i just did it because i thought you wanted to do it um <laughs> no that's a, that's a god honest truth like if i like i deferred to you like you defer to me like we gotta like it's it's nuts but if if it's an actual like i can order it for like for a fight or on you know whatever then yeah then we gotta pick it but but that's it speaking of picking things we're about to pick a real winner here because longtime friend of the shining wizards pws hall of famer and the <laughs> entrepreneur of j george's cinematic universe the one and only j george is joining us and now he just left and now he's gone <laughs> he's he's that, that's called that's called the receipt tony it's always amazing when Jay George is on. We never know what to expect. Oh, here we go. The cinematic universe is, is uh, here. We The cinematic masterpiece. Jay George, did we just wake up, my man? What's going on? Uh, I'm just uh, stressed out. You know, I'm at my wit's end, unfortunately. Come with a little more excitement when you come on this show, bro. No, what's going on, guys? <laughs> yeah, <it's> just, <laughs> uh, you don't understand the pressure I'm under putting the show together, first of all. Oh, that's right. This has been all on my shoulders. Well, what, it this, is J. George's what, this, cinematic masterpiece. Oh, I, I thought I, I thought he meant I thought he meant the Shining Wizards podcast. Well, th- that sloppy shop, boys. What's going on here? Usually, you guys are great. You reserve the time, to send the link. I'm over here sitting on my ass waiting and <laughs> getting a link, and I, I'm tuning into the show because regardless. I'm still a fan, so I'm watching, listening to the podcast, and you guys are trying to throw me under the bridge like I didn't show up. Oh, we had no, I had no idea what they did, what the deal was. I know it's funny. I've been messaging the the Twitter page, which is run by Matt, and he has no idea what's going on. <laughs> I, t- I texted you guys at eight oh six. Is everyone okay? He replies, "What?" And I reply, "Shining Eddie Jack Edward Jackson," and he replies, "He's been gone for years, dude." Yeah. <laughs> so that's the cut. That's the conversation. That that's happened. the conversation. Were you talk? Were you not talking to Matt? Who are you talking to? I have no idea who I'm talking to. Well, well you're, you're talking, talking to Kevin and Tony now. Exactly. Listen, Matt's not here. I know he gave you. Well, he told us he gave you the edict of no dad jokes. But since Matt is not here, and we like to have fun on the Shining Wizards. You talk about whatever you want to talk about. You got dad jokes. Tell any joke you want. The floor is always yours when you're with us. You know this. Hell yeah. <laughs> and I apologize for Matt, who's uh, once again, did I mention he's not here for not giving you the proper information? That That's a ball dropping. And he's, he's, usually, he's usually the one that, that's on, that does all that, huh? Yeah, I don't understand why you dropped the ball tonight. I don't get it. Especially guests of your caliber, it's it's just it just it's it makes no sense. Un- unacceptable. And we're going to hear of the, We're going to but we're going to hear about it tomorrow, Tony. By the way. So you told us you've been busy with this cinematic masterpiece. Can you first of all, what makes J. George decide? I'm going to jump into the uh, the promotion side of things full force. This is going to be my gift to the wrestling community. What makes you decide to take this step? Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. No. 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 That's, Uh-oh. None of this was my idea, unfortunately. Oh, fuck. Was it CPA's idea? This is the the staff at Pro Wrestling. They just believed in me. They, uh, I was, a, you know, I was just a kid from New York trying to make a name for himself. That's right. And they liked what I was doing. And you know what? WWF in your house, Degeneration X. Mm-hmm. You know, rock bottom style. Let's give him his own show. Let's let's ride the wave of momentum here. And that's kind of what happened. So can you talk a little bit more about this momentum that you're that you're going through, man? Like, what's what, what's like the wave going for that you actually were trusted in having a, a show gimmicked around you? The well, I mean, my presentation I think has changed a lot, and I which I completely owe everything to the 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 Creative Pro uh, School and and the people there. You know, like by the time I came in there, it was a, I came in there at a very interesting time because of, uh, like I, I signed up there January 2020, right? And this is after 2019, which I considered the lost year for me because I was all over the place. I was, I was, I was, you know, uh, different parts of the globe, and then I come back home, and then 
I wasn't in a great place. And I, I signed up January 2020. You guys know the rest of how that goes. But during that time, I'm still in there training when I could. And, you know, as things started opening back up and we started doing more tapings, I, you know, everything came together. And uh, Pro Wrestling Magic was like the first place that were like, I, I was able to come back and I didn't have much to really put out at that time, but they were just like, yeah, hey, come, you know, right place, right time. And it's from there, it was just like, they, they digged what I was doing. I was, I was, I was told by the promoter, I was like his million dollar man in the sense of like, you know, how if Vince could have been a wrestler, he would have been the million dollar man. Right. And yeah. That was the situation. It was a similar situation with me with what I was doing, and it was something. And I'm glad, you know, that we had that connection and it resonated with them. So then they were like, "Hey, here we go. It's showtime, baby. It's showtime." And you know what? The pressure's on, right? So, I, 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 I take p- part of how I came to this point of this whole director thing is because it's it's real. It's true. I have a certain vision for how things should be. You know how I if I have a thing in mind, so I kind of got the the rain to all right. Well, now let's see what you could do. And I had I got to produce all this content. There's going to be a intro scene. You know, there's a cinematic opening, a cinematic ending that cost me fifty thousand mm. dollars. And meanwhile, I feel like I'm in the a producer situation. Maybe this show's just set up to fail, and that was the whole idea from the get go. And they're going to make out like bandits and my name is going to be tarnished. So, you know, and uh, we're talking with Jay George right now and we'll 100% get back to his show. Jay George's cinematic masterpiece live on independent wrestling TV, pro wrestling magic, September 11th, 7 PM, Ridgefield park, New Jersey, which has become kind of like a weird, I don't know how this happened, but it happened before the pandemic where Ridgefield. Park it was, yeah, be- it was, yeah, it's a spot. Ridgefield park has become like the epicenter of uh for a lot of independent wrestling in New Jersey, but I want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier about how, when you started with create a pro yeah. and what's it like for someone like you, who's been around the business for a long time. And when you get started in a new school, right? Like I know you're, you, you know what you're doing, but you, you still have to, like, is it like that? Do you have to pay your dues again? Do you, I know they trust you, right. but do you have to like, do you have to go through it all over again or no? It was, I was ready to, for sure. You know what I mean? Because I knew I had to kind of start over. Um, I don't know. It was, I, the thing with, with it is that I had a relationship with pretty much most, I want to say most of the people there, not, not most, but I don't know, at least, especially Max, Mark Sterling. Like I've, I've been on countless shows with these guys and have developed friendships with them you know what i mean so like i felt really comfortable just kind of coming in and then mark uh was like kind of the bridge for me where i was like hey man what's the scoop can i come in and train or whatever and then yeah he was like here this is what you got to do and then max was uh, at that time doing a lot of the the training there so i i i don't know i didn't really feel that and that this their system and what I love about it is it's all business. You know what I mean? At the core from, from when, from seven o'clock till nine or till when open ring ends, it's all business. So it's, it's a very, there are a lot of those like uh, societal pressures and things like that didn't really weren't there for me just going there. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. And that, and that's really cool that especially because um, you know, the bonds, the friendships that you make, the, the relationship, the relationships that you established don't necessarily go away uh, like ever. Like, like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dude. I've had uh, people I met from like first early bookings that like would fo- that follow me to this day. You know what I mean? And those right, things so, are priceless. Absolutely. So uh, let's get into. Uh, well, that's funny to you. You think that's funny? No, it's that's funny your... that your windscreen is swinging back and forth like a pendulum. <laughs> I know you see that. Well, okay. <laughs> and I already forgot my. All right. A metaphor for my show. I already forgot my next question. No, 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 no. Your show is going to be 10 times better than that. Hell yeah. It'll be a freaking pendulum times 10. So you're in pretty good with the pro wrestling magic guys. My question is, uh, uh, you booked yourself in a four-way dance for uh, a shot at the pro wrestling magic championship. Um, So 
when you when you win this four way dance, wh- who do you expect to go after for the championship? Champion, duh. <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> but I mean, Erica Lee's defending against Killian McMurphy. What what are your smug, what are your thoughts on on your main event? She is smug. Have you guys ever been around her? Yeah, she's a uh, smug. Mm. Yes, smug Killian, is the right Killian, word. Yes, Killian, uh, you know, has got a little bit of the smugness himself. Mm, smug. I've wrestled Killian before, and I think he's not going to fare well against Erica. If you ask me personally, he's weak-minded. So. But you're kind of hoping he wins, though. I mean, why? Well, because you could defeat a weak-minded man easily. No, he's unprofessional as well. He tried to hurt. He tried to injure my arm at one of the shows. Do you believe that? You ever see that in the wrestling when the guys attack the other guys after the match? You ever see that? I hate that. I don't like. Mm. It. Yeah, but it happens. No place in wrestling. Do what you got to do between the belt, but like make sure you got, you know, well, you guys can go to work the next day. You know what I mean? We're on the road, brother. <laughs> I don't agree with some of his choices, man. And that's per- like professionally, I have no interest in working with the guy. If you want to, if you want to be honest, Who? I'll, say it, I'll say it again. I'll say it straight up. I, yeah, I don't professionally I have no interest in working with Killian McMurphy. So what about yeah. Eric? I've never wrestled her before. So that, and she's got the championship. Yeah, so she's the champ. Yeah. Again, we're assuming, right, oh, who's going to win? I think I'm pretty sure it's going to be Erica because, again, Killian, weak in the mind. Yeah, we can't have that. Lost for gold. So, Jay George, without giving up too much, and I know the people are going to want to come to see this show because it's going to be something completely unique. What do you plan on providing the live crowd for the cinematic experience in terms of your role? Yes. Yes. Excuse me. I was prepared to talk about all the stuff I have planned for the stream because that was all I was focused on. The live show. We're going to have, you know what you could expect? Professional wrestling at the end of the day. Isn't that what it's all about? Yeah. Right? Isn't it that, always is. Isn't that what's on the marquee? Isn't that what this, the, in this case, uh, the, yeah, the second W stands for in pro <laughs> wrestling magic? So let me ask you this though: Are you? No, you going... look like you you're looking a little smug right there, Kevin. Like you don't give a shit. No, no, I'm. I'm are you kidding I'm, me? I, no, are you, I'm, what are you out of your balls? I'm Listen, trying I'm to all, figure out where the first W is. You said the second W in. <laughs> all... Listen, Jay George, I am all in, baby. I am all freaking in on this. I just want, I just want for people to who may not be familiar with this event to try to get a feel of what they are can. Are you trying to get me to promote yeah. my event? That's right. that from what I can understand. That's I that's right. <laughs> Yeah, no, like I said, don't forget what the second W stands for. It's professional wrestling. And not so we have Killian, Erica. That's actually uh, going to be the main event of the show. And the decision, man, it was so tough. You would think it's my show. I'd go on last. A glorious moment. But I, yeah. I want to show the world. Nope. I'm a humble booker. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself. I'll, I'm going to be like third or something. Who cares? There you go. Right? Who cares about Jay George? You know what I mean? Uh, Jordan Blade. How about this? You guys are going to be a fan of this. You guys, I know you guys are going to be a fan of this one. I heard you guys talking about wrestling today. You guys are going to be a fan of Jordan Blade versus Lady Frost. I just literally saw Lady Frost on Friday. I'm a big fan exactly, of Lady Frost. Exactly, so you know. Yeah, big fan of Lady Frost. So uh, I enjoy, and Jordan Blade, I can't wait to, to, to check her out. So if, yeah, listen, if I'm you've never seen Jordan Blade out. before, Jordan Blade, Jordan Blade can go. She she had an awesome, like, it was like a back and forth series with uh, Alley Catch at, at, at our last shows. And they, they even traded the championship. But Jordan Blade's like, and as soon as, look, as soon as she lost it, she made plans to get it back. And she did right away. So, like, it's good stuff. There you go. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. You know? You know what I'm saying? Tony, you got a question for this fucker or what? This fucker, as how real versus you? Everett Cross. How about this one, T.J. Crawford? This one is actually I'm super excited for. Yo, I, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. I I mentioned this match to Tony either pre-show or earlier on in the show versus yeah. Azrael. I I'm excited yep. as heck for this one. I made a mistake. I said uh, Everett Cross. He he's in a, he's in a, another uh, match, but uh, yes. In the first ever Mystic Mayhem match, it's going to be Azrael versus TJ Crawford, and I'm pumped. Okay, and, 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 wait, wait, Tony, wait, you got to let me let me go first. Tony, mull on yours because I've uh, I've said for a lo- a very long time 
that TJ Crawford is one of my favorite athletes sure. in wrestling. Like literally, like, I think he had a match uh, a while ago. I was like, this guy is going to be one of the best, like th- the expression is thrown around a lot in wrestling, the best pure athlete in professional He's- wrestling. He's a great athlete and a great wrestler. Good. And I actually, uh, so fun fact, that was actually my choice to wrestle him. And uh, they said, nope, he's got business to take care of because Azrael, I think, assaulted him. But what, what were you, you going to ask, Tony? What is, what mystical mayhem? All right. I'm, this, that's what I wanted. I wanted you to ask me. What See, I asked the good questions. Yeah, all right. I'll just leave. <laughs> you don't care what, you don't want to. That doesn't intrigue you. You ask what I have for the live audience, and I tell you I got a Mystic Mayhem match. No, I just insulted my question. Hey, Jay right. George, before you answer, I think yeah. Kevin's a little smug tonight. He ain't a little bit. He's I'm not smug. smug. <laughs> That's like the last character you could find in me. Is Kev, smug. Kev un poquito, a little bit. Oh, un poquito, okay. Oh. <laughs> un poquito smuggle. <laughs> so, Jay George, answer it. The the the, uh, the Mystic Mayhem match, yeah, the Mystic. So, all right, the rules. It's pretty simple. The rules are simple. All right, the only way to win the match, right, is by pinfall, submission. Uh, if the opponent gets counted out or disqualified. Wait, what? It's, it's not complicated. All right, it's not a. All right, so it's, no, I literally just didn't hear you. That's it's not an Aztec warfare match. It's simple. It's the only way to win is pinfall, submission. If your opponent gets counted out mm-hmm. or disqualified, you know, if he uses a weapon or something. Uh, oh man, that's yeah. that's innovative. Yeah, that's for, <laughs> that's for the live crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so are they doing magic tricks or anything like this? Like, I mean, you could. If you want to do magic tricks, as long as they're not like, you know, harming the opponent or anything that'd be disqualifiable. But if, what if what if the trick is to make your opponent disappear? Then you just count them out. I, we're not. We're lo- this is independent wrestling. We're doing. We're not. We're not doing uh, laser stuff here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but this is your cinematic masterpiece. I would think like you're the puppeteer. You pull the strings. I mean, you're the Jim Henson. Yes. Uh, originally, and I, I, I kind of gave up by the time my match changed two or three times, but originally the plan was going to be the first ever live cinematic match because this whole pandemic time, we've seen everyone's attempt at the cinematic match, right? Yeah. Guess what? All right. This is a lot of show for, for first times. And this was my gift for independent wrestling. This is pro wrestling magic's first like full no limit soldiers no seating capacity we're filling it up to the brim like a can of sardines people are going to be coming in the first time in in however many months we're going to wave them in right and it's the first time the show streaming on iwtb which is largely where my focus went to now the live cinematic match in theory is going to happen with me, Ace Romero, MV Young, and uh, Tony Depp, and, uh, but it'll happen in wow. spirit. Damn. It'll it's incredible. Anything, anything you could tell us that you're planning for the cinematic match? I'm going to have a special camera angle that I don't think people have really done in, res- has, has done in wrestling before, so we're going to have a special camera set up for it that's kind of be the key and i'm i'm making sure it's just going to be in a precarious spot possibly and i just want to make sure you know for the fans that are in attendance as well as all the other workers that night stay away from that camera but other than that the camera is going to be there and i think people are going to come down and they're going to take a look at the camera and they're going to see how it's angled and they're going to get a kick out of it so what do you think can be done in wrestling? You just mentioned like this camera angle that you don't think has ever been really done before. Right. And you could watch that for the first time in person, or you could watch it on IWTV. Exactly. 100% uh, September 11th at, at Ridgefield park. Uh, yeah, but sure. what do you think? Is there more that can be done that you don't think has ever been done before? I know you're a very creative guy. I've, known you for a long time tony's known you for a long time that's known you for a long time is there anything that you think that could be done on this level this independent level that no one's ever seen before like are you talking like physically in the ring 
Uh, I, I, maybe more for the production, I guess, just for the sake of this conversation, I guess. I mean, both, whatever, whatever you want to answer. I don't even, I mean. Like you literally just threw us out there with this camera angle that you don't think's ever been seen. I, I don't know. The problem is like, oh yeah, this camera angle is going to be, I, people are going to, when people come to the show, they see the, the camera angle is going to be great. Um, yeah. and, and if that's it, and if that's, if that's all you got, that's totally fine because it's innovative in amongst itself. Yeah, definitely hasn't been done in wrestling before. But, you know, that's the thing. A lot of stuff, right? And it's something people got to remember sometimes. There's a lot of stuff in wrestling that that hasn't been done before, right? right? Doesn't necessarily mean it would be better or good. People fell in love with wrestling because it worked for how it was as we saw it, no? Even because, like, I've been I've been digging into some 1970s wrestling, and that works for me just fine. Not the greatest cameras, uh, angles or whatever, and all that usually, but I mean, I don't know. They got the camera on the ring. They got a camera on the floor. Sometimes that's all you need. I've seen people. You know what I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of, the, especially the bigger companies, experiment with the camera on the on the corners in the post. You ever see that? Yeah. Watch if you watch AEW. They have. You could see. Uh, in the corner, they have like a, a cutout in the in the turnbuckle post. That's the camera. But how often do you see them use that angle? Ooh. Very rarely. Ooh. Exactly. It is rare because at the end of the day, it's like, well, what are you going to see from that angle? It's it's going to be like, you know what I mean? It's not going to be the greatest of angles, you know? It's not even the greatest quality. Like, you can always tell when they use that camera. It's right. a off, a little funny in the color and whatnot. I don't know if WWE still has one. I'm pretty sure they do, I think. But like yeah, you're asking the wrong podcast. But even then, do you remember when WCW did the ref cam? The referee, yes. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, that's right. The ref I forgot they, that's what they called it. Dude, oh my god, they did that. Yeah, and it, that didn't work out. So it's like, what could you really do in that sense? You know, the right. Patrick Ward thing. It looked like he was one of those kids that needed like corrective skull surgery. <laughs> oh. What? That's what the helmet looked I like. I know, I know. <laughs> Look, Nick Patrick's a smart guy. Maybe it did him some good. Maybe it helped him out. I don't know. I I like the occasionally the WWE one with the holographic stuff. I think that's like pretty cool and like, but like I don't know how that looks in person. Ooh, so we're doing holographs in person? You're saying? No, I just say I'm just saying I don't know how that looks. If the have you guys do you guys would know about that or anything? No. Look, I was in the Thunderdome 16 times and I never noticed these graphics while I was watching in the Thunderdome. But aren't you watching the same normal stream as everyone else, but just in real yeah, time? Yeah, but just some asshole yelling at us to cheer and boo. That was the experience. Please tell me Jay George is doing the Thunderdome for this show. I mean, there's no need because we're going to have the people there and it's going to be... It's gonna and be it'll be on IWTV. Evercross will be taking on uh, Darius Carter for the Dark Arts title, which you would think maybe I make that the Mystic Mayhem match. But from what I understand, Carter does his own thing with that championship. He he likes to do the British uh, style with the rounds and whatnot. So have at it. Jay George, is there ever a moment in your life that you'd ever think that you might be able to appear as a hologram? Why? I don't know. It's just <laughs> the weirdest question that came to my head because we were talking about holographs. And I was like, imagine that Jay George hologram just doing all sorts of J. George shit. Like, may, like it could be anything. Like, you could be the greeter at Walmart. You could be in, like, a concert with, like, like there's, like, another Beastie Boys. Like, say, like, yeah, like, say you weren't able to be somewhere, but you still wanted to be there. Let's put a J. George hologram up. I like that idea. I, 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 I'm... <laughs> I, I was trying to think, like, I mean, would that be something where they have people, like, remember how the Rock used to, you know, do the promos live via satellite, you know? Yeah. What if you they, could be there. Like, what if they did it live via hologram? There you go. And it's not just, because now they just have them kind of, they're like stationary logos or poses. <laughs> Dude, a, a hologram actually in the ring that can walk around and interact with people. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You do the whole like. Right? There you go. Look at him. He's gonna do it. That's that's what it would be, right? It would be a lot of this, just walking around. Yeah, maybe with the mic in your hand, maybe or something like that. I, I, I love how J. George has to show us how people walk around. <laughs> I love. Listen, I love J. George. <laughs> 
And for those, I know, you know, for those that had no idea, like that's what it would look like. There you go. All right. What, what, what's the match? What's the match that people should keep an eye out for? Whether it's like, in your opinion, the best match that's booked on the show, or maybe people that really haven't gotten any recognition yet that you think like, hey, these folks are, these are some people that you should keep your eye on. Like, what's the one thing you should, that, that you feel people should look out for when they tune in for the show? TJ Crawford versus Azrael. That was, I think I put, I don't know if I put that on the post or I was meaning to, but I do think that's like the match where I don't want to call it a sleeper hit, but I think, you know, given all the other matches, I think that's going to be the one that people are going to yep. enjoy the most, to be honest with you. And well, I, you would have thought I'd be like, oh, it's going to be my match. I just, and I, Azrael's been around forever. And I think TJ Crawford is super establishing himself as a person where he shouldn't be considered a sleeper anymore but he might still be considered a sleeper. He's, I think he's that good. And that's just me. So I, we, we also have Smiley versus Sebastian Cage and yes. Smiley's revenge, you know, and Smiley is one of the most innovative guys I've ever seen. If you want to talk about things that haven't been done, the stuff he comes up with in the ring, it's truly like, you know, commentators can't be like oh that reminds me of batista shades of batista <laughs> commentators gotta cut that out all right it's no it's, i hate that uh, shit we get it you know you're wrestling this we all do that's why we're in this so like let's 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 put the other guy over you know what i mean yeah. unless it's like blatant like a very blatant thing but like i don't know yeah, if it's the exact move then you have to yeah if I do a spine bust, you don't have to say who it reminds you of. A million people do spine busts. Okay, maybe not the exact move, but the exact finish or something like that. Maybe that. Got to be specific at this point. I don't know. Yeah. Even don't a know. tombstone, though. Like, you, why not just call it a tombstone? Why do you have to say Shades of the Undertaker? You don't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Some pe- some people do push it that way. You know, like if I see a hologram somewhere, I'm not gonna go. Oh, Shades of J George. It's a mm. hologram. You know. Like I do. I'll do the, I do this uh, headbutt that, the, the JYD headbutt, right? Which is all well and good, but at the end of the day, it's still headbutt. You don't need to, yeah. he, he's over enough. He's got an action figure. I don't. Not yet. But, not yet. Not yet. In due time, I do have this custom one, though. Actually, as a man, I see this. this I love cool. figures. I love, see, this is why, another reason why I like J. George, because right. he's a big figure head. There it is. Oh my oh. god, that's fucking sweet. Whoa! There it is. Boom. All right. All right. Well, you get the idea. Well, we'll, we'll I'll I'll screen I'll screen grab that and put that on Instagram tomorrow. Ow. <laughs> it's a great time for wrestling. It's magical, and I'm really uh uh I can't I haven't slept well. I I, I don't eat as much and I'm um overworked at this point. Everything you've seen so far, the graphics. Uh, that's all that's been all me the production on this on this thing when i tell you the shot that that i have set up for the outro for the ending of this thing this is it's it's gonna speak for itself it's good stuff the shot that i have set up for the show the special camera angle is oh my god that's gonna be great i'm so excited for people i'm telling you i think that's to me more of the attraction so don't forget what the s <laughs> all right what the, the w you mean the w second the second w in wrestling no <laughs> i'm sorry don't forget what the second e stands for okay it's entertainment as in sports entertainment. Uh, people are gonna come in <laughs> that's not what that's not what you said before <laughs> people are gonna come in well no because the, the rest we have the wrestler but when you see the camera angle they're gonna get a kick out of it it's gonna be like seeing the world's tallest toothpick <laughs> you know not you know what i'm saying a roadside attraction like the world's biggest chair yes i got you so when you would you go you want to sit in it toothpick was not the right no no chair was better I, it worked yeah. i was there i got you yeah because when you see the world's largest chair you immediately want to go sit in it and be a part of it right exactly there you go now it's a go. crazy time for wrestling man are you kidding me Oh no, we are not kidding you. We are not kidding you at all, my friend. Thank you very much, Jay George. Tony, you got his plugs. <laughs> what are we? Are we not? I thought that was no, a perfect sorry. way to. I thought that was a perfect way to go. 
I'm sorry. I'm just laughing. I'm just having a good time thinking about what the first E and the first W are in uh, entertainment and wrestling. J. George cinematic masterpiece is going to be live on IWTV, part of Pro Wrestling Magic. September 11th, 7 p.m., Knights of Columbus, 106 Bergen Avenue, Ridgefield Park. You can visit Pro Wrestling Magic uh, at uh, Pro Wrestling Magic Ticket Leap dot com. Of course, visit Pro Wrestling Magic. Follow J. George at J. George the movie. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize you had switched your uh, your Twitter handle there. I'm going to change it again. I don't know if I like this one. <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's changed quite a few times. Yeah, I, I, I forgot what I had J. George TV, and I don't even know why I went with that one. Uh, I thought you were, were going to go with J. George Bret Hart. You know, I was going to show you guys a clip of the. I was going to give you guys a, a sneak preview. Oh, give us, give oh, us. Yeah, we're we're here for it. Of of the of the show but i understand we're out of time so no we're-, we're not out of time we're good well you're out of time with kevin i'm here for, for- i just thought it was a perfect way to end the show i'm trying to be a good host i didn't That's know if the, i didn't know if the, if the show had I'm trying a, to kick him out if the show had a hard out you know no i just felt it felt organic that's all, all but right. now i'm ready for this i'm here for is, this is, can you give us a hint is the camera angle like a crotch camera no, that's crass. I don't do toilet humor. Come on, guys. No, 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 no. He doesn't do that. No. Speaking of toilets, I was dating this woman once. <laughs> I was. Have you guys noticed? No, I didn't do. I, I wasn't doing my stand-up comedy character because I was told no dad jokes. No, 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 no. We told you the. We told you at the jump that Matt wasn't here. You do whatever you want. So. I thought to... he was gonna be here. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's working. Yeah. All right. He's becoming a dad. Yeah. What? Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, his his son is uh, Edward. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm entertaining it. myself. I'm trying to help. J. Okay, well, let's let's. What do you got? What do you got for us, Jay George? Let's right, hear uh, this. I'm, I'm opening it up right now. I guess I'll share it my screen. Well, yes. you, that works. Oh no! Well, no, it, it doesn't work. Well, Jay George, you'll appreciate this. I just played in a poker tournament with a lot of funny people, uh, the cast of Clerks. So I think you'll appreciate that. Nice. While you, you do that, clerks, yeah. you guys talk Clerks Three. You got a scoop? Any? What can we expect? I got no scoops. Kevin has no interest in talking about anything about Clerks Three. No, I just wanted to let you know that it was it was I, I was at the final table with Brian O'Halloran, and All right. uh, it was pretty dope. And Kevin Smith was there, and Jamie's was there, and it was wild. This is what Kevin does. He likes to just drop all these famous. People. I'm literally just trying to filibuster until we get. Well, it's going to happen tonight, guys. But you guys can expect to see the show live on IWTV. Of course. And we can't wait for it. J. George, ladies and gentlemen, Tony, let's do uh, one more round of plugs for this man. All right. I'll go through it one more time. Because he deserves it. We love J. George. Did you guys play the game in person? Yeah, Red Bank. No, that's pretty cool. I thought you were doing like a Zoom game. No, no, it was legit. It was uh, was in-house. Shake your hands. Show respect. Uh, Brian O'Halloran, I did not sit at the same table as Kevin Smith and Jay Muse, even though Jay Muse knocked on the door while I was taking a leak. Yeah, and then I came the, out. What was the conversation like? They're talking. They're doing I was just like, I was like, yo, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to lock the door. I'm just taking a squirt. He didn't mean to lock the door. He's like, oh, Jay, come on in. I'm just taking a Yeah. Squirt. Sorry, man. If, listen, I would have let him, to be honest with you. Was, was, were they having a crash, crass conversation? No, no, no. I, I, I didn't. Like I didn't get this, a lot of expletives. No, I, I didn't get to talk to Kevin Smith. They were there, though. They were in the same room. I wasn't playing at the same table as them, but I was yeah. playing at the same table as Brian O'Halloran, Dante. Also, oh, it's like each table had like a guy from the. No, thing. no, no, no. It, it was not. No, it was just literally randomly picked. Like everyone was like picked out of a thing, and everyone was sat at a table where they were assigned. But then once you get down to the nitty gritty, you ended up merging. So I ended up at the final table with a uh, Rhino Haller and Dante, but not Kevin Smith, not Jay Muse. Um, so what'd you do? You slip a couple a, po- a poker chip or two or what? Nah, I just I just didn't play great at the end of the day. Did you they didn't have like Jay and Silent Bob poker chips? That would have been right. cool. Steal no, them. they had they had uh, markers for everybody though. They had little chips, individual chips for everyone that had their face and their name on it. Ooh. Did you get like a swag bag? I got a, a little participation trophy, which I actually <laughs> forgot. But Jeez, uh, this country. No, no, it's, it's a terrible story. This is, <laughs> this is really not great. Everyone gets an award. 
Tony yeah. wanted to do two hours flat, and we're gonna go like three hours now. And so I, I gotta mention, I gotta mention before we go off to the American Motor Society taking on MSP. MSP is another tag team that doesn't get enough credit. American society is just, just like carnage. It's chaos. It's torment. It's hatred. It's putrid. It's violent. And then I, oh my God, this show's going to be crazy. You guys, I can't believe it. It Jay sounds George, like it. On, on a date, it's going to be a day people will never, ever forget. Yep. It's, it's pro wrestling uh, magic. J George's cinematic masterpiece live on IWTV. Uh, September 11th, 7 p.m., Knights of Columbus, 106 Bergen Avenue, Ridgefield Park. You can get your tickets at prowrestlingmagic.ticketleap.com. You get two shows for the price of one because the doors are opening at five and they're uh, doing some stream matches that they're going to air later on in October. Uh, but J. George's Cinematic Masterpiece starts at seven. That's what you're there for. The Pro Wrestling Magic World Championship, Erica Lee defends against Killian Murphy with Big Dust. Dark Arts champion Darius Carter against Everett Cross. The junior heavyweight championship four-way Saiva Al-Sabab versus defense against Donovan and Manny, R- Manny Rodriguez and Alec Price. The Pro Wrestling Magic Women's Championship, Jordan Blade versus Lady Frost. The four-way, J. George himself will be involved with MV Young, Tony Depp, and AC Romero. Smiley versus Sebastian Cage. Your mystical mayhem match where you can win by pinfall, submission, countout, or disqualification. TJ Crawford versus Azrael. And the American Merce Society versus MSP. J. George, you know you have an open invitation. Just hit us up next time Matt forgets to send you the credentials and be happy to send them over earlier, too. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's always a pleasure, man. And Matt's a good dude. And I wish him the best of luck. And I wish uh, you guys the best of luck going forward. And we wish you the best of luck. Have a great show on Saturday. We'll be tuning in. And uh, I'm real curious to see that camera angle. Back. <laughs> getting kicked out of that, baby. I'm telling you, it's good. No, that's, that's definitely, co- even if you guys just come check out the camera angle. Like, that's awesome, man. Nice. It's going to be cool. Thanks again, Jay George. Be well. Good luck with everything. And get some sleep. J. George, everyone. Like, I didn't great. mean to laugh when you were trying to wrap up. I don't know what happened. I, I, just, I literally just thought it was an organic way to close close it out. Like, Tony, what you got for plugs? <laughs> no, no, I didn't say what you got for plugs. Whatever it was. I said, did you have his... Like, I felt like it was a, a better way to pass it to you as opposed to me doing it and maybe missing something. No, you're right. There was no reason for me to laugh. I don't know why. I just, I just, it just struck me as really funny. Like, I had it. Like, I had it up. I have the Gmail open right now. I could read it. I just didn't have his Twitter handle because you said it changed like six times. Oh, it always changes. It used to be Thunderheart. Yeah. It used to be uh, Unpredictable J. George. It, was, it changed all over the place. It, it just felt like an organic time to to let the show breathe a little bit. So and let him go. And so you and me can be the two man army that we were destined to be. Yeah, man. Let, let, let me just go for this for two minutes, and then we'll get we'll get to the meat and potatoes. Tony, listen, you, you're the you're the captain of this shit, baby. And I'm then just, we'll, we'll, I'm just Gilligan, baby. We'll wrap this up. There's notes on NXT. It seems like that we got to talk about AEW. No, no, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, okay. Flow through these things. It seems like. I don't know from what Matt said in the notes, like McMahon's in charge of everything, but there's going to be like a bigger picture for now for NXT. And it doesn't seem like Vince, Nick Khan, or like these guys are going to be, I don't know. It, well, it, the, the initial rumor was that it was going to be a Vince and Bruce thing, but it's not like they're going to be involved, but they're not going to be day to day or something like that. I think it's more like right. a picture for them, no, whatever. No, it doesn't no, matter. I don't really, honestly, Tony don't really care. Yeah. Don't really care. Well, look, it, it's going to change over next week. So if we will tune in, we'll try to figure that out. Yeah. Not really pressing. Um, let me see. Death Before Dishonor. I think that's coming this weekend. So we should talk about that because I think we're doing picks for that. Yeah, we, uh, I think we're doing picks for that. And I think actually Kate the Great is actually going down for that, I believe. And it may be Matt, too. I don't know. Awesome. I'm not sure. But here. So it's going to be in Philadelphia at the 2300 Arena. That's Sunday night. Uh, Bendito's defending the RH world title against Brody King, EC3, and Demonic Flamita in a four way. It's elimination rules. The finals of the Women's World Championship tournament uh, Pure Champion John Gresham defends against Josh Woods. The six man champs Shane Taylor promotion against La Facción in Gornable. That's Dragon Lee, Kenny King, and Bestia Del Ring. Two top free agents are going to face off against each other. That's going to be announced Tuesday. So stay tuned to find out who those two folks are. Mm. Uh, Violence Unlimited, Homicide, Chris Dickinson, Tony Deppin, taking on John Walters, LSG, and Lee Moriarty. The Briscoes are taking on the, OK, the OGK, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, 
Eli Isom versus versus Dalton Castle. The other big news is that Roosh is going to be out for the remainder of the year. He yeah. underwent emergency knee surgery. Uh, so he's going to be gone for a while and his contract is up at the end of the year, according to uncle Dave. Uh, so blah, 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 blah. Like I said, the free agents are going to be on, uh, they're going to be revealed on ring of honors week by week this Tuesday. Uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack are going to wind up on a collision course with the good brothers. So that's coming up just to jump to impact real quick. Um, bah, 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 bah. There's also shit going on between Josh Alexander, victory road. He defends against Chris Sabin. Um, let me see. World champion Christian Cage takes on Ace Austin. He defeated Tommy Dreamer Thursday uh, to prevent Dreamer to, from entering the match. So it's going to be a straight up one on one. We talked about New Japan. Kev, I think that's really all that I really want to touch on, unless there was something else from Impact. Has been fe- Impact has been no, nah, just in, in, Impact is completely like in a span of like two weeks is because I don't have access. And it, since they took it off Twitch, it's like it's completely like. I know it, it really threw off all your shit. I it know. really threw a monkey wrench into it. I, I try to like do it later. Like I try to do the tweeting late and it's just like, it's not the same energy as it is live. And it's just very, very hard to commit to. And I try to, but then like by the time the stream starts and by the time it's over, it's already like maybe like 11 as opposed to 10. And it's just like an hour later out of my life that like I want, want to prepare to go to bed. Yeah. So it's like, I got to find out. I don't know if there's a way to get access TV through maybe somebody else's cable provider, but I don't want to be that jerk that. Yeah, asks, I don't what's have your, I, What's your cable password? I'm in the you? same boat as you. I have Comcast, so I don't have access to access. So it's it yeah. sucks for both of us. Uh, good news. Uh, Don West, following his story, um, he was suffering from a brain lymphoma. His cancer yeah. is in remission. He finished uh, 13 tra- uh, treatments of chemo. Good news for him. That's pretty awesome. Great so news. he's a uh, matter of fact, wow. He, he does sports radio in Washington. That's pretty cool. I had no idea. Good for him. Braun Strowman signed for his first match post WWE. He's going to be taking on EC3 in a, apparently EC3's web series, Free the Narrative. So Hooray, Braun Strowman's getting back in the ring. John Moxley and Sammy Callahan are going to be teaming up to take on Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards, the Wolves, in October for Pro Wrestling Revolver. That's big because Moxley and Callahan get back together, but I think this is the first time that the Wolves have been together since 2017. Yeah, unless they may have, unless they've already done like an indie date. I don't think they have. So this is 100% like a big match. And I can't remember off the top of my head moxley's and callahan's uh tag team name are they were they death machine no they were the switchblades the switchblades yeah so so that's that, dude that's a main event like anywhere and davy richard's getting back in the game i'm so happy about that because yeah it's gonna be cool man it's gonna be yeah. really cool uh real quick note hard times two is set for the nwa saturday december 4th uh we don't know the status of nick aldis's career he's gonna make an announcement this uh tuesday on NWA power. There was some power. good stuff that happened on power this week to continue. Um, I think sky blue was on there. Um, oh God. Oh, Chelsea green wrestled um, page. Uh, Kenzie page. Kenzie page. Kenzie page with a big upset win. And of course, um, Chelsea green couldn't accept the, the win. So she started going nuts again. So we're seeing, uh, we're seeing whatever, what was, what's her character the called? Hot mess. The hot mess. Dude, hearing Tim Storm say she's becoming a hot mess was really, really like strange and surreal until Velvet Sky had to repeat it right after he said it because Velvet Sky, of course, is the yeah. greatest be all and end all of commentary. No, nah, well, uh, with, all, with all, I have all the respect in the world for Velvet Sky, but not on commentary. Commentary is not her bag. I don't understand. Kevin, I think that's everything else that we covered. And let's and let's be honest. That hot mess was Chelsea Green's bread and butter, and she'll make she'll be Dude, phenomenal. That with entire that. Laurel Van Ness storyline yeah. with Braxton Sutter, greatest thing to me in Impact history. I oh. love that whole storyline. It was so good, really good, oh. really good stuff. Kevin, just last night, I can't believe we're waiting until the end of the show for this. This is incredible. 
Well, I mean, it just it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, Matt right. the news and notes about about AEW, but who gives a shit? It's all about one thing and one thing only. Last night, all out. It was oh, my god. It was probably the best pay per view. And again, I'm not gonna pretend like I know every pay per view that happened this year, like verbatim. But this was the most entertaining show that I've seen this might be my new royal rumble 1992 okay now in fairness you went back and watched the whole thing i watched everything okay the two things i watched because i really had no time to catch up listen we're adults i watched the cm punk darby allen match i had to find out how good it was going to be and i watched the big show qt marshall match after because it was only three minutes so i squeezed that in so which we, you, you knew that that was going to be the place of that match like, of you knew it. it had to be like, and look yeah. it was easy for me because like i said it was three minutes I, i'm going to watch the rest of the show during this week so i will not be missing out but i will tell you this much uh the darby allen match and this is this is the great thing about all the people they've brought in because now they've got a lot more experienced people to work with the up and coming guys that know how to slow things down. Darby Allen got to do all of his great stuff and he looks like a maniac doing it. And that's what Darby does best. And he's great at it. And it makes sense in a match, but to have CM Punk just control the tempo and you could see at points where he was actually, you know, you could see him talking to him. But the way he slowed it down and then gave Darby those spurts, just incredible. An yeah. incredible match. And 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 this is this is what you kind of see. What, and I don't think all right, so here's the thing. Everyone considers Darby Allen the Daredevil, the this, that, the whatever. But never in his life has he been incapable of having a match like this. Yes. So he was always like that's what people on the, I, again, I'm not trying to like cast shade or anything. But people don't understand about pro wrestling. Just because you're characterized in this way doesn't mean that's all you can do. Yeah. Like Darby Allen is a pro, he's trained as a pro wrestler. Yeah. That's what he is. So there's no way that you can't doubt that he could have this, this kind of match. And and CM Punk was was as good as you could possibly want for and one, who's been out for thing- seven years. One thing I really liked, like typically you've seen Darby Allen just just booked as like always come from behind. Yeah. And in this match, the way Punk started with him, Punk gave him a lot. Like he yeah. was actually like Darby was actually outsmarting Punk. Yeah. And, and, and I think Punk knew that. Like I think Punk knew that that's what he had to do to make this match work. It was, it was just so good from top to bottom. Even even like when Darby throws himself out of the ring and then the dive from the top to the outside. And then when he went for the coffin drop and Punk just sat up. Just was like, oh, and, and Darby literally landed right next to him. And All right, here's, so the, here's, the, here's the only thing, if I'm going to nitpick. Okay. That, like makes, nitpicking. that makes everyone else that doesn't do that look like a freaking fool from now on. No, not necessarily because I think unless you're unless you're incapacitated to the point where you can't necessarily get up. See, well, that's the other thing, too. Like Punk can, you know, say, like, look, I know the Darby Allen playbook. I was ready for this. I knew but everyone, know, but everyone knows the Darby Allen playbook. Yeah, but Punk could also play it like I did the research. I knew how to I knew how to yeah. take the beating and come away from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so, yeah I mean, it, listen, playing possum is, has existed in wrestling forever. So it's not the first time someone's played possum for something. And this is just another move that someone that CM Punk just happened to play possum for. So I'm totally cool with it. I think it was a great optic. I think it was incredible. And when Darby, when Darby, for the first time Punk went for GTS and Darby slid out of the ring and got out of it. And then the second time when Punk actually hit it and Darby went flying through the ropes. And Oh my God. Dude, what a bump he fucking took, right? That, but it was incredible. It didn't look like it was staged. It looked like he actually, like, when he nope. got hit and the momentum sprang him outside the ring. And he literally beautiful. fell through the ropes. Like, it was he beautiful. Literally went yeah, he didn't even get, like, he didn't touch the ropes. Like, he literally yeah. fell through them. It was and for, great. And for, and for all we know, that could have been the case. We don't know. If, we don't know it wasn't. And, 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 that's, and that's, why the, that's why I love wrestling. 
that's like, like that's why like it's so perfect like, like to me that looked as real as anything i've ever seen and punk didn't chase him out he's like all right i'll i'll let the count go let's see if he gets back in if he doesn't get back in oh well and he started he started though he started to try to to convince a referee not to count but then was like the referee said no i have to yeah and punk was like, like all right all right do it count it up god excellent match if, if the rest of the show which i've been reading dictates the way that match was i'm sure top to bottom i'll tell you i'll tell you what i thought the the match of the night was and uh it was to me it was 100 percent Britt baker chris statlander really yeah 100 percent. that was the match of the night to me i mean mjf jericho told a hell of a story and it was it was totally different than you know the the Bucks luchas, but Chris Statlander and and Britt Baker was such. And again, I'm not here to you know, I don't have I have no knowledge of how wrestling works, but um, it, to me that was the most entertaining match to the point where it was on the card. So whatever you put on after it had to follow that. And I know I, I believe Moxley and. Kojima was on before that. And I believe that the opening match was what's the opening? What was the first match of the card? It was uh it was the best friends hardy party shit. Wasn't well, no, it? that was the pre-show. The opening match was God, why am I drawing a blank? Um it was oh it was the it was Miro and Eddie Kingston, which was a, a tremendous match, which I loved. Listen, the first hour flew by like a rocket ship. Like the first hour and a half was just like an incredible intense pace of action that was just incredible but to me and i love the bucks match i loved everything else after it but to me the match of the night it took three it took three i think brit baker moves to her her finish to 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 put chris out before she ended up making her tap or pass out or whatever it was or no she pinned her i believe um but it was just that was the match of the night to me like I remember saying it then. I remember saying it like literally after it happened. That was the best wrestling match I've seen in a long time. The the Paul White QT Marshall match. It was a typical big show match. It was a lot of match. And it was it was a lot of fun. Just watching QT yeah. get get fucking chopped to shit. Um, Nick Camarado trying to get involved and he fucking ate a punch and Aaron Solo trying to get involved and Big Show just kind of fucking just picks him up and yeets him into the ring. Fucking, you know what? For the three minutes it was, I was okay with it. I actually was like, okay with it. Well, there, there's a reason why that, like, there's a reason why that match was put there. Oh, of course, it's the let up. Because you can't go from, uh, well, it was Punk and Darby and you can't go to Kenny Omega in your main. All right, Tony, let me ask you this. Were you uh-huh. surprised that the punk match didn't close the show? And no. do you re- and do you respect the fact that they stuck with their world title as being the, the the last match? Well, Kevin, I think if there was any doubt as to whether or not that was going to happen, it's the stuff that happened after the title match. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. In hindsight, that's yeah. going on last. Yeah, it had to. It yeah, absolutely and- had to. So before we get into that. What's your any other highlights of the show that you want to touch on? And look, if you want real in depth coverage of the pay per view, please check out the Mark Order podcast on Wednesday at about 10 15 because they're going to have super duper duper in depth stuff. They always go crazy in depth because it's an AEW show and that's what they do. But if you had any highlights that you want to mention, you want to, you know, just inform me or the people, and yeah, no, I'll speak out to you. I 100% do. And I think a lot of it has to do with the roster that they've built. And a lot of it has to do with, like I said, from the opening contest, Oh, Ruby Soho. There you go. Coming in and just literally here's one, another nitpick, but I just don't think people know about it, but like the name of the song by Rancid is Ruby Soho. So people calling the Ruby, they're putting the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. Kills me. She's Ruby Soho. Like that's the Rancid song. Like, and I, again, I'm not blaming JR. I'm not blaming Justin Roberts for maybe not knowing who Rancid is. But, like, come on, Ruby Soho. No, it's Ruby Soho. Like, that's the song. And it was, that was an incredible moment. And I'll tell you this, Tony the Adam Cole surprise, and we'll get to it. I know I'm jumping ahead. It's all right. 
but I was wondering when they're going to have, literally when he came out, I was wondering, are they ever going to have a massive heel debut? I know Malachi Black came in not too long ago, but like on this stage, are they ever going to have someone come in and not be a babyface debut and big star? And then Adam Cole did it, and I was through the roof. And I, I'll tell you this much too. Like you can tell, like Malachi Black, people were happy to see him. But people were fucking creaming their jeans when Adam Cole came out, dude. Yeah, I, I think people would have probably had the same reaction if it was Malachi Black. Like, because because again, this is a completely different audience in WWE's. They 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 share, of course, they do share, but I think Malachi Black, he had a great reaction when he showed up too. So it's sure, not like, but I think in the grand scheme of things, when you're talking about Adam Cole, baby, yeah. people love that shit. Dude, I've watched it. Nope. Like, I've watched it a million times over and I get chills every time. I like Take, digging to nothing out, away out, from, out. nothing away from Tommy End. Great talent, people love him, but that fucking Adam Cole baby. And I do like that after All right, after that the beat down and then dun, 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 yeah. and then they went to that dude, I'm so glad that they at least used that to bring him in. You know, even if it was just a little smidge at the beginning. But come on, dude. Fucking Daniel Bryan. Dude, it was perfect. And this is kind of what I think I've said this a bunch where like, if you're going to bring all these people in, you have to do two at one time. Like, remember when I said kind of like you do Daniel Bryan and CM Punk at the same time? They did Adam Cole and Daniel Bryan at the same time, which, listen, the crowd reacted huge to Adam Cole. If they left with that, I think it would have been okay. Okay, but so no, that's they my... just made it so much better. And now you have Christian still there. The loot, like, he... I'm sure so glad that uh, that uh, Marco Stunt stood on the outside of the ring. I'm sure that's going to make Matt very happy. Are you there? Are you frozen? Oh, I think I lost. I was thinking about that. Oh, okay. There you are. You're back. And, and I felt kind of bad for Marco. I didn't. Talk I was about... frozen for a second. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Do you think they could have split but, no, but, this up? Do you think they could have split these debuts up? Maybe let Daniel Bryan no. come in? Okay. No, that was the only, no, that I was the was only thing I was wondering about. Okay. No, look, it was a great moment for sure. 100%. And I think, that, like I said, like I, I was a proponent of having CM Punk and Daniel Bryan debut at the same time. And even if you watch, did you watch the, the media scrum after with Tony Khan? No, but I heard that Daniel Bryan talked a lot about his relationship with Vince and that stuff. But but the, one of the first questions they asked CM Punk was, do you feel like this was similar to um, Hogan, Hall, and Nash? Yes, I was. Yes. Okay, I read this. And I said that, like, would you, like, I remember saying it a long time ago, and I think Matt may have agreed with me. I'm not 100% sure. But, like, I was like, would you debut CM Punk and Daniel Bryan at, at the same time, not knowing Adam Cole would be available, but would you debut them at the same time as the new Hall and Nash? So I'm not the only one that's thinking about this. And it's, this was, I think was the most perfect. I think it was the most perfect pay-per-view I've ever seen, to be honest with you. This is what CM Punk said. I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not Hogan. I'm not Savage. Daniel Bryan, Adam Cole, they're not the outsiders. I see the parallels This is totally different. And I'll go ahead and say it. People can quote me. They'll be pissed off about it. To me, this is bigger. That's. I mean, you have to say that. Yeah. And I get, look, it's not, but you have to say it. Well, to certain people, it might be. Well, yeah. Different demographic. 100%. People 10 years, 15 years younger than us. To me, it's not. It's big, but it's not that big. It's the closest thing, I'll say. Sure, but somebody maybe 15, 20 years younger than us, yes, this is definitely the biggest thing for them. Yeah, it's, dude, it's a big deal. Like, Adam Cole got such a freaking reaction, and he was, and now he's going to be in a stable. He's not a lone guy. He's going to be a part of something. So to me, like, like, that means that he's okay with taking a secondary role where in NXT, he was the top dog. Yep. So, like, he's going to be on, on that. Again, wrestling is a never-ending business. So, eventually, we might see Adam Cole, Kenny Omega. We might see Adam Cole, Bucks. We could see that. That's on the table. 
And but for now, he's playing a role where listen, there's so many, there are so many top guys in AEW right now. It's nuts. Yeah. I think the only big difference is though, when uh like Hogan was already in WCW fine, but I think the big difference was Hall and Nash came in as people that were outside the company looking to take the company over. And right. it's not, it's not the, like, look, the bullet Cubs there, Adam Cole joins them whatnot. But in terms of CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, they're coming there because it's an opportunity. Yeah. And if a side thing of that opportunity is they got to take down the bullet club, then so be it. The elite. Hall and Nash. Well, the elite, I'm sorry. Um, Hall and Nash came in to take down the company and they managed to get Hulk Hogan to join them. It's a different story. Yeah. And to me, that's always going to be like the bigger story. Hogan's the bad guy now. Hogan's siding with these idiots from up north. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, the way long term, the way the NWO played out, it went in the toilet. But for that moment, for that first year, NWO was fucking huge. Huge. It and changed the business. Watch. That whole thing changed the business. And I watched the the post. Uh, I, I literally watched the entire hour and a half of the the post show scrum with Adam Cole, with Ruby Soho, with Lucho Brothers, and uh, Daniel Bryan, and CM Punk, and all that stuff. And listen, if they're there to truly contribute to this show, and I believe with all of my heart that they are, he W ain't going away, man. No, no, not at this point. Selling I mean, out t-shirts he, hand over fist? Come on. And now the, the only question is, is Tony Khan going to be playing fast and loose with money? That's oh, the only been. thing that I'm worried about. Well, if you read in the notes, um, Brick Baker just saw, re-upped part of her deal. But what was telling about that is that most of these people that came in were under three-year contracts. Now, Tony Khan is within his rights to let a lot of these contracts just expire, yeah. you know? So if he really wants to up his game, he can just let loose some of the folks that are just meandering and not doing anything. Now, look, see, that's what makes me nervous about what the whole purpose of AEW was in the first place. Yeah. But look, AEW is an inclusive place. AEW is supposed to be an alternative, but AEW is not, is not ATM. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's got to, he can't run in the red forever. He's got to start making better business decisions. And now he's got core talent that he's happy with that are making names for themselves that are actually talented. And he's got veterans that are going to help these younger guys ply their trade and get better and get better. So now is the time to start looking, okay, who really isn't doing much? Who's not really of value to us. And I don't like seeing people lose their jobs, right? But if they're not at that level, Tony Khan's within his rights to, you know, like, hey, go do something else and let's revisit yeah. it in a couple I'm, of years. I mean, you're right. We can't we can't just make it seem like AEW is not is the is the complete polar opposite of WWE in terms of a, a business standpoint. They got to make money. They got to make money. Just and don't like, get me wrong. They're making money. But you got to at some point turn that red into black. You have yeah. to. Oh just, yeah. And hey, listen, they might be doing it even with the people that they said. And if they on, are on, good on for the them. Contract. Yeah. But this is the time where like you got to start analyzing, you know, who can we get rid of? Who who do we need to like send off with love? Hey, go do something else, go make your money, get better, come back, and let's well, revisit. Well, 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 uh, here's another thing that I, I that actually I don't think we've talked about. A lot of their contracts other people are working other things already. Yeah. So, and so it's it's like kind of like a maybe like a pay by just keep these dates open. And if we need yeah. you, you can't do that. And that's what uh, TNA did for a long time with a lot of talents. Yeah. Like, like listen, we're going to sign you, but you can do other things. But if we need you for this, yep, then, then you, you have to, you can't do that. And yeah. AEW has been doing that for a while with a lot of guys. So there you go. So there you go. So who knows how that'll play out, but I just do find it interesting that it it's um, yeah. Like the three-year deals are going to start coming up soon. So we'll see what happens. I guess, I guess they were signing people once the first all out happened or all in whatever the first show was that they did under Cody and the ball. Well, they had to then. Yeah. So anyway, Kev, before we start pulling the train into the station, there is 
is a little thing we need to finish up with with AEW. Uh-oh. It's time for the Shining Wizards pay-per-view pick extravaganza part two. AEW all out. Holy shit. But I need to stop that music for one second because Kevin. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Someone calling in? Wait, no, that's not it. Fuck. Fuck, I hope this is it. I thought, I thought Matt was coming in. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Oh, God. That's why I thought he was calling in. Oh. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we did have back-to-back perfect weeks, although this week was not mine. We have to give the devil his due. He's not the devil. I mean... It's a, it's a phrase. Or he's clo- he's close. He's he's pretty satanic. <laughs> he's, he's like an underling. He's like Bill's above. He's and he'll above. tell you. He'll tell you himself that he is. He's no longer handsome, and he's the devil incarnate. But he is perfect. He wow. went a perfect ten and oh, 10, Kevin. For this week's AEW. That's, impre- that's impressive. Ten is impressive, and and it's doubly impressive because. He managed to pick the winner of the Casino Battle Royal for the ladies. Yeah. Soho, which, look, AEW has not been known for their surprise entrance in the Casino Battle Royals. You know what I'm saying? Let alone, like, these entrants actually coming in and winning the day. And winning it. Normally, they come in, maybe have a strong appearance and lose. Although, and- I think he did say Adam Cole. No, no Adam Cole. Jesus. Ah. The cowboy Adam Page was the the wild card in the first one, but was Adam Cole a secret entrant? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he just happened to be the wild card. Yeah, but anyway, so listen, I gotta get you gotta give him his props, man. He nailed 10. It's hard to nail 10 freaking matches. Oh, it is, it is. But Kevin, all right, so let's let's get into the entire thing. So, boy, Matt Matt went 10 and 0 for, for AEW's all out. I finished pretty respectable at eight and two. And Kevin, you also finished pretty respectable. You were seven and three. That's right. The matches we all got correct. We all picked the best friends and Jurassic Express over the Hardy Party. Uh, Miro defeating Eddie Kingston. Moxley defeating defeating Kojima. Uh, Dr. Britt Baker defeating Butlander. Uh, CM Punk. Put some respect on that name. Hey, listen, if Johnny fucking wants his nuts, Johnny Big Arms can call it Butlander. I can call it Butlander. Who's Johnny Big Arms? Johnny fucking Silver. Oh, okay. Uh, CM Punk defeated Darby Allen. Paul White defeated QT Marshall. Kenny Omega defeated Christian. The ones where we got tied up. Um, Kevin, you picked MJF. Matt and I both picked Chris mm-hmm. Jericho. That's right. Uh, Matt picked the Lucha Brothers. You and I picked the Young Bucks. I was kind of surprised at that. But what a great pick by Matt. What a no, great it was. Pick. And the great, but this I think is a better pick. Matt took Ruby Soho. I took Thunder Rosa, who finished second, and you picked the returning Anna J. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. That match is always a toss-up anyway. It's kind of like a throwaway. If you get lucky and pick the winner, Matt just had the foresight to pick Ruby Soho. And yeah. it came off. He's done I mean, that. He's done that for years in the Royal Rumble, though. Like, I think he picked Ronda Rousey back in January, and it just didn't work out for him. So, I mean, a lot of logic in each one of our picks for the Casino Battle Royale. Yes. Um, Thunder Rosa has the history with Brit, you know, Ruby, the, the anticipation of Ruby Soho coming in and, and Anna Jay came back and I thought they were going to try to maybe put a little engine behind her. her and I mean, my, thought, was process, what it was. my but, thought process was if Thunder Rosa wins, we already know that Britt Baker can beat Thunder Rosa and she'd be a worthy next yeah. step for Thunder Rosa for defense. But look, Ruby Soho is not a bad call at all. I mean, I didn't go that way, but good for Matt for doing that. Well, I know that then when they fight on pay-per-view, I know I'm still picking Burt Baker to win that match. So, Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. So, Kevin, I know I shit on the idea earlier, but here are the official standings as they are oh, for boy. September 6, 2021. I stand in the lead at 137, 52, and 1. You are six matches back, 131, 58, and one. And why am Matt, I six? Why am I six ma- matches back, Tony? Because I forgot to pick six matches. Well, I mean, you I mean you only lost three that day. So in fairness, you would have been down three, even That's if different. you went three and three with us. You would have had to run the table to make it even. So but it sucks. It's gonna be another asterisk year, and I really feel fucking ugh about no, it. It's anyway, not very, no, it's not. What I don't feel ugh about is fucking 117, 72, and one. Matt is still 20 games back. 
Uh, I went 16 and six. Matt went 16 and six. You unfortunately went 10 and 12 for the weekend, Mm -hmm. but we do have ring of honor coming up this week. So maybe things will start to balance themselves out. Don't forget we run up until the Royal rumble, but not including, which means we're going to go through three nights of wrestle kingdom this year. So we have that to look forward to. Oh, baby. Oh boy. You know what? I need to pull this up because I'm getting fucking tired. And I think it's about that time. It's time, baby. No top five, no trivia. We are good. Go buy a shirt on ProWrestlingTees.com. Is the sale have... still going on or is the sale? Oh, it's still going on. Oh, wait, is it over? It might be over. I don't know. If the sale's still going over. on, you get 20 Yeah, it usually <laughs> probably goes up till noon probably today. Yeah. So never mind. It doesn't matter. If you ordered your shirt now, you'd be waiting for Christmas to get it anyway. So there'll be another sale before then. They usually have a year-end sale around Thanksgiving time. So That's whatever right. it is what it is. We are the Shining Wizards, shiningwizards.com. Follow us on all social media at Wizards Podcast. Don't forget our Patreon, patreon.com slash Wizards Podcast. All of our bonus episodes are available there if you join the $3 tier. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give us five stars on whatever podcasting platform you listen to. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Join us on our Discord. The link is on our Twitter page. Kevin, you got anything to plug? Uh, no, man. Comedy's a little light right now, but I'm sure it'll pick up in, uh, in the fall. So we're good. And I know Matt might get mad at this, but please, KP Burke is going to be at the Smod Castle this weekend recording live yes. for his first ever comedy album. Shows are at 7 and 9 o'clock. I wish I knew where to get tickets. Do you have that information? Uh, let's find out right now. Um, I don't think... I don't think he's. I think you actually have to just go and go. I think. Oh, I don't. I didn't know. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, I'll, check it out. I'll, I'll post it. We'll, fi- we'll figure it out. Kevin will put it up on the social media. Check it out. I know we break KP's balls. I know Matt likes to go back and forth with him, but definitely support him. He is a funny fucking dude. Go check him out. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I'm not going to say the line I usually say because Matt's not here, and I know it won't cheese him off. But Kevin, Two Man Army, another great fucking show in the books. Loved it, man. Thank you to Jay George. Thank you to everyone that's listening on Facebook and, and watching on Facebook and listening everywhere else. Rain Tam Radio and all that good stuff. So thank yes. you guys. And uh, Kevin and I will say what we always say when we talk. See you. Peace. <laughs>